celeb stories. Let's start with, uh, well, let's start with the, the box office. Uh, Civil War reigned supreme uh, this weekend, taking the top spot with $25.7 in its debut nice. at the North American box office. Godzilla X Kong, uh, the new empire, grabs second place with $15.4 million. It's third weekend in the theaters. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire managed to grab third place, and Kung Fu Panda was fourth. And rounding out the top five, it was Dune Part Two sticking around, taking in four point three million at the domestic box office. Uh, this was unfortunate to hear. Michael Strahan's daughter, uh, Isabella Strahan, uh, has shared that she experienced a setback in her fight against brain cancer. Uh, she revealed in January of this year that she had been diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. The 19-year-old model shared in a recent YouTube vlog uh, that she had to go through a third craniotomy after developing a fever. And she apparently has to go to the hospital uh, anytime that she has a fever that's over 100.4 degrees. And a craniotomy is an operation where a small hole is made in the skull or a piece of bone from the skull is removed. Uh, the bone is usually returned to its original position after the surgery. Um, while at the hospital, she had an IV inserted and fluids drained from her head, among other procedures. And she told her followers, I started hysterically crying because I need to get an IV and I haven't had an IV in so long. There's ups and downs to this because I was eating so much a week ago and now I can't eat anything and I'm in a down. Ooh. This so I girl is, said, oh, I mean, we, we saw her when she was um, on GMA with her father and, they, you know, she's, she's trying mightily, but she's yeah. getting a ton thrown at her. Poor thing. Hang in there, man. Hope things turn around for her. All right. I didn't know where to put this. I saw this yesterday. <clears throat> and I'm going to put it in the entertainment news because uh, the guy eventually became a porn star. So John Wayne Bobbitt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's entertainment. Who made headlines in 1993 when his then wife chopped off his penis while he slept. Recently opened up about the most recent appendage that he has lost. And that would be all of his toes. All of his toes. Yeah, Bobbitt, a former Marine, was diagnosed with toxic peripheral polyneuropathy after being exposed to contaminated water at the Camp Lejeune Matil 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 Military Training Facility really? in the late 1980s. You've all heard the ad. The commercials yeah. are constant for, for, the, these, for the lawsuits. Uh, yeah, for these yeah. class action suits. So... Uh, the condition causes nerve damage to the extremities and caused Baba to have all of his toes amputated over the years, uh, the last of which were removed last year. So this is an update on him. Uh, the operations left him, who's he's 57 now, uh, with two raw stumps for feet, a limp, and needing special prosthetic shoes. Uh, the condition can also lead to chronic infections, ulcers, and painful skin grafts. Well, I mean, it's pretty wild that that would be the thing that would affect him. I mean, the, the original story was... You know, she had cut his, his junk off during the night, and I think she'd thrown it out of a car. Wasn't she that did. the case? Yep. Uh, he had it surgically retached and then went in, as you said, went into porn. Bobbitt says his time at Camp Lejeune left him with more than just physical scars, but mental ones that he believes contributed to his volatile relationship with his ex-wife, Lorena. He said, maybe I would have made better decisions if my cognitive functioning wasn't distorted by the chemicals. Uh, so Lorena Bobbitt had claimed that her then-husband had raped and beat her. This is in June of 1993. This was just the biggest story yes, in the country. Huge. Uh, chopped off his manhood with a kitchen knife inside of their Virginia apartment. She fled to her boss's house and threw the member out the window as she drove. In a nine-hour surgery, doctors reattached Bobbitt's, sal Bobbitt's salvaged penis, <laughs> returned it to normal function, Bobbitt has sworn. And then he went on to launch a porn career and in 2013 claimed that he slept with 70 women since the vengeful attack. How could that have been possible to go back to normal? Uh, well, normal possible. enough for him, yeah. you know? It's quite possible. Uh, that year, he nearly lost a foot after contracting an infection from a dirty nail at a construction site. Uh, his former wife faced up to 20 years in prison for the infamous act, but was found not guilty due to insanity. He was acquitted on charges of sexual assault in 1993. So, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's so it's so weird. Uh, so he is so among weird. the many military members, families, and staffers believed to have been exposed to contamination at the North Carolina camp who are now fighting for compensation. But I had no idea it was a part of that. But yeah, yeah. No more toes <clears throat> at all on his feet. It's crazy. That's got to be, I would imagine, you know, it doesn't seem like much not having your toes, but that's really got to change. Oh, yeah. You think of a stabilizing walk. Yeah, yeah exactly. How, how much, so that's why I know that the shoes that they have, that people who are in, have this, 
they they compensate for not having the toes yeah. so that you can get that rolling motion as you're walking. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Uh, so you think you can dance alum, Cora Obedi. I'm not familiar, but this uh, this was terrible. She was allegedly attacked in London. Uh, the dancer auditioned for the show while pregnant in 2019. Share with her friends and fans on Instagram that she was attacked in, uh, in London with a knife and a liquid was thrown on her, which she feared was acid. Oh, man. Uh, she updated her fans that she went to the hospital to get checked out. She said, guys, I'm in the hospital. Safety with travel is no longer a luxury but a necessity. The acid was allicylic acid, uh, sal uh, salicylic acid, and I was lucky, she says. Love you guys. Uh, so she alleged her attacker was a five-foot-tall female and asked her fans to send any information they might have to her. So she uh, has also said an investigation is underway and that others may have been attacked as well. A bit of bad luck for her. She showed up at the hospital the day they were filming, so you think you're a doctor. Oh. Uh, yeah. Damn it. And uh, no, you don't want that at that time. With Ten doctors yeah. on her. Um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle celebrated his team's win at the Royal Salute Polo Challenge over the weekend. Uh, but it's the photos that they posed for afterward that people are talking about. Uh, footage of the photo op making its rounds on Instagram shows the Duchess Sus of Sussex seemingly not allowing a woman to stand next to Harry for a picture. In the clip, Megan is seen presenting a trophy to her husband and his team on the stage at the Grand Champions Polo Club in Wellington, Florida. She poses for photos with the team, and then an unnamed woman who is wearing a cream-colored dress, the same shade as Megan's, walks over and attempts to stand next to Harry. I say, bitch. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh. <laughs> One more time, Casey. I say, bitch. <laughs> Uh, Megan then says to her, do you want to come over here? And she motions, motions for the woman to stand on her left I instead. I these nuts. And uh, the, woman's, the woman moves as directed, but she was forced awkwardly to duck under a large trophy to get there. Oh, yeah. She, I want to kiss you. <laughs> she bored her colleague her big time. I mean, if you were in that situation, <clears throat> I mean, I'd try to get next to him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, but, and, and also, though, the, the people that are in that, you know, that are under the microscope like that, they very have specific ideas yeah, about yeah, photographs. Yeah. Sure, and, sure. And, and how you look best. Yeah, yeah. what what does and does not fly. Right. So I can imagine she's like, uh, I think you should just stand over here. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> the best position for anyone taking a picture with uh, me is in front of me, blocking me from the camera. Yeah, right. totally. So the first Monday in May is coming up. And as those in the know know, that's when the Met Gala happens. Yay! Wow. A ticket for the annual event known as uh, Fashion's <clears throat> Biggest Night is $50,000. Seems fair. Uh, but it, it's still, uh, it's an invite only. And you have to be approved by Anna Wintour. And Do you the, get a Wawa gift box? Uh, the guest list for this year is filled with celebrities as usual. Uh, the theme... For the 2024 Met Gala is Garden of Time. Ooh. So we're going to see all kinds of... Yeah, yeah. floral sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. and uh, yeah. Grass. Somebody's going to wear an outfit made of grass. <laughs> There'll be a lot of tone-deaf stuff going on, like, so, you know, r railing against the rich. So if you have uh, if you have uh, garden and also time is in there, too, so you uh -huh. know that people are going to do, like, clock motifs, I would yeah. think, or okay. something along those lines. Something outrageous. I would go dressed as one of the gangs from the Warriors. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. The baseball fury. Yeah, the baseball fury. Yeah. That'd be, <laughs> what, why does this have I'm, to do with Garden of Time? Because they, in the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> well, florals are like, they're very, very trendy right now. All kinds uh, of different floral prints. So I'm sure that's where it's stemming from. Okay. Uh, Co-chairs are Zendaya, Chris Hemsworth, Bad Bunny, and Jennifer Lopez. Zendaya's looked She's oh. kind of rocking a, a tennis thing lately. She? she looks sensational. A tennis thing. Yeah, because she's, she's in this tennis movie that oh. gets pretty provocative. Oh, okay. And so she's kind of adopted that fashion look, and it, it she's rocking the fashion world. You know, I'm very dialed in. That works for me. Uh, <clears throat> Giselle will reportedly be attending once again. It just says Giselle. Is that Bunchen? I yeah, assume. I, she had her last name legally removed. And everyone's waiting to see if she'll be bringing her boyfriend, jiu-jitsu instructor, Joaquim Val, uh, Valente. Look at that! Uh, <laughs> ha! Ha! <laughs> Back off, War Child, seriously. <laughs> I told you that's embarrassing. Oh, it would be the best. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that, that's his whole identity. Yeah, that's like, it. Yeah. What's up, guy? What's up, John? We're at the Met Gala. I said, bitch. Yeah. So, um. I says, bitch. Rihanna, who's appeared on the Metropolitan Art Museum steps in several iconic gowns at Met Gala's past, will also be there, of course. Uh, Cara Delevingne, regular at the event, is returning, as are Olivia Rodrigo, Uma Thurman. Please hit the sound effect. Thank you. We haven't had that in a while. Uh, Sarah Paulson and Barry Keegan from Saltburn. Uh, Kendall Jenner. What about is, Terry Bradshaw? <laughs> Isn't he going to be there? Yeah. He's also reportedly going, but there's no word yet. yet Honest to goodness, I need to see something like that. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? For no reason. Terry no Bradshaw whatever. show up at the Met Gala. Yeah. What am I doing here? <laughs> uh, so, no word yet on whether Kim Kardashian will be there or any of her sisters. By the way, wasn't the word that they were going to deep six this thing overall that uh that uh, i remember there were rumors that it might go away and that anna wintour anna said hang it up she'd had a, a kind of enough of putting yeah. it together and all the politics there's a tv show on uh called um dave uh, starring lil dicky and uh oh, yeah. the last episode or one of the last episodes of this past season they skewer the met gala they, they mm. completely make fun of it and um dave uh wears this uh, stevie wears an outfit that if you pull like on a certain level it completely inflates <laughs> like uh Veruca Salt as a blueberry and, and Willy that. Wonka. And so yeah. like, they kept waiting for that to happen. And then there was a, a comedy of errors. But it's really great how much they skewer it. Because he's sort of in that world. Yeah. But he also makes fun of that world. Uh, I had a friend who I think she worked for Vogue. I think she was an editor for Vogue. She was pr she was pretty big in the New York fashion industry, and um, I don't know if she goes anymore. But she used to go to the Met Gala every year, and she wasn't like you know uh, arriving and entering like that. I mean, she was she was working, but she'd have to wear you know some sure some they they, ha they have a dress, code. dress that probably no one had money for you know right. just to but just to walk around and and work. But yeah, she said it was. Um, you know, it was pretty interesting. So the core of the Met Gala, the thing that makes it the Met Gala, is that that mm -hmm. ascension up the stairs, that whole that yeah. massive red carpet thing. Once you're inside, well, what do they do? Is it just a regular party? Yeah. I, I, well, I think they, I think kind of like uh, fundraisers, yeah. people get up and speak and right. they, you know, pat themselves on the back and ask for donations right. and stuff Standard like that. Standard fare. Um, so, newbies making the invite list for the first time reportedly include... Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> no, Killers of the Flower Moon star Lily Gladstone and A.O. Uh, Edebiri, uh, Edebiri from uh, The Bear as well, which is cool. Um, so, I, I threw this in celebrity news, too, because uh, I wasn't quite sure where to put this, and this was sad news to see. I actually saw these two people at Penn one time uh, at uh, the hospital. Uh, the world's oldest conjoined twins have died. Ah, uh, yes. Lori L. Uh, Chappelle and George A. Chappelle of Pennsylvania died on Sunday at the hospital at the University of Pennsylvania. They passed. You away saw here. them there? I was there just go, to go see. Uh, Doctor Mike was sending me over to see. You know, to I don't know, get an MRI or something. Wow. Together. And sure enough, I I had seen them in documentaries and things. Right, before, right. And and they have a special wheelchair because they kind of face each other. They're attached at the head. And I saw them, and I'm like, that's got to be them. It oh had to be. Who else could and then I went and I did a little bit of research, and I'm like, yeah, they were based <clears> in this area, and I absolutely saw them walking through the hallway well, there one time. They defied predictions oh my by, God, yes. by decades of how long they would live. Uh, they were 62 years old at the time of their death and had previously been employed at the Reading, uh, Pennsylvania Hospital. Uh, Lori and George were born in 1961 in West Reading. Um, and uh, they are two of eight siblings. So that's just horrible that... There's you know. the other conjoined twins who are conjoined side by side. Okay. So they, they, these this, these uh, twins were, as you said, joined at the head. Yeah. I don't even know how you... How, how you, you live your life, live like, your that. life like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they maintained independent <clears throat> lives, even, although they were uh, craniopagus twins. Uh, craniopagus twins is probably how you say that. Um, in addition to appearing on talk shows and documentaries, uh, they also had a cameo in an episode of Ryan Murphy's show Nip Tuck at one point. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that uh, George pursued a career as a country singer. In fact, at the end of the movie, Stuck on You, ah, which is about conjoined twins. That's right. The song they play is, I believe, the uh, the Chappelle twins singing. So, uh, And in fact, I think they mentioned them in that movie as well. 
Um, so, yeah, they lived in a two-bedroom apartment in Pennsylvania. They each had their own rooms. They had to alternate their sleeping arrangements every night and even showered separately. In 2007, George, who was born Dory, had announced that uh, he was a transgender male, making him and Lori the first same-sex conjoined twins who identify as different genders. Despite doing their best to maintain their own lives, they reported that they always said uh, that they didn't want to be separated. Um, this was... Uh, it would, it, besides the way they were joined would have been damn near impossible, right? George, yeah, probably. George probably said in 1997 uh, in a documentary, why, would we be separated? Absolutely not. My theory is why fix what is not broken. So huh. that was sad. amazing. Wow. Sad news to see, but what an extraordinary life they lived for sure. Uh, let's see. I have some other things. Uh, how? Okay, this is a... I'm sorry about uh, all the some of the negative stories. Here's someone else who passed away, but what a story. One half of the New York Yankees' most bizarre trade ever has died. Fritz Peterson, who exchanged wives and children with his teammate, Mike Kekich, died Thursday at the age of 82. And I have the full story. Wait, oh, we got to hear this. <laughs> yeah. So Peterson told the Palm Beach Post in 2013, we did that and we had so much fun together, Suzanne and I and Mike and Marilyn, that we decided, hey, this is fun, let's do it again. I guess that they... Uh, Stringers? They, they kind of hung out. Yeah. yeah. And so he said, we did it the next night and we went out to, to the Steak and Ale in Fort Lee. Mike and Marilyn left early and Suzanne and I stayed and we had a few drinks and ate. It was just really fun being able to talk to somebody. All of us felt the same way. We went on from there, and eventually he fell in love with my wife, and I fell in love with his. In spring training in 1973, Peterson and uh, Kekich, Peterson and Kekich agreed to entirely swap families officially. With kids and everything? Yeah. And what about the pets? Peterson joked it was actually a husband-for-husband -husband trade. Uh, Peterson remained with his new wife for the rest of his life, while Kekich and the former Mrs. Peterson did not last all that long. He said, that's the only thing that I feel bad for, that they, that, uh, they didn't work out because we all figured that it could all work out, Peterson said. Shortly after the swap, uh, Kekich was traded to Cleveland. The Yankees also sent Peterson there the following year, but Kekich played in Japan during that season. Peterson spent 11 seasons in the big leagues, nine of them with uh, New York. While best known for the swap, he actually had been a top-notch starting pitcher while wearing the pinstripes. He played very well. What if this were to actually move over into the general world of matrimony, where you had sort of that, you know, you had your... Uh, trades, you know, see the, uh, yeah. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm, all I'm thinking is because they said that the one couple didn't work out. So it was this couple that wanted it. And we were, they were like, hey, let's try this. This should work <laughs> right. for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, uh, but he, he passed away. He uh, died Thursday at the age of 82. But that's an interesting story. I was not familiar I wanna with. I want to talk to his kids. And yeah. see what they think about it. Yeah. yeah. They're all in therapy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Rumors have sprung up online about Selena Gomez, and she wasted no time shooting them down. An Instagram account claimed that several tabloids are saying that she had an affair from 2020 to 21 with John F. Kennedy's grandson, John Kennedy Schlossberg. Yes. Wow. When a Selena Gomez Instagram fan account reposted the headline, Gomez weighed in in the comments section, said, never met this human, sorry. <laughs> And uh, effectively, she shut the rumor mill down. It's all a bunch of hogwash. For that count. Uh, Schlossberg is the only grandson of JFK. His parents Kiss are my Schlossberg. Caroline Kennedy and Edwin Schlossberg. I believe he's in politics as well. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I believe so. So a Chris Farley biopic is apparently in the works with Josh. Oh, my God. With Josh Gad <clears throat> set to direct. Uh, Paul Walter Hauser, I'm sorry, is attached uh, to star as a legendary comedian. No word yet on where the project will land, but it's sure to attract a slew of bidders. And the film uh, will adapt the best-selling biography called The Chris Farley Show, A Biography in Three Acts. And that's by Tom Farley, his brother, and Tanner Colby. Lorne Michaels, who of course cast Farley on Saturday Night Live, is producing via Broadway video. And the project, which will <clears throat> mark Gad's directorial debut, has the blessing of the Chris Farley family. Interesting. So Chris yeah. Farley's brother, one of them, I don't know how many brothers he had, but um, uh, one of them was a comedic actor and, and did a couple movies and looks a lot like Chris Farley. Okay. Uh, Hauser's film, well, maybe they'll cast him. Or uh, no, He they, might be too old. Actually, yeah, yeah they yeah, casted yeah. Uh, this other guy, Paul Walter Hauser, who I know him from a couple of different things. Was he the Richard Jewell? Uh, yeah, he's in um, Cobra Kai. Oh, yeah. yeah. He plays Stingray. Yep. That's it. Yep. 
Uh, Hauser's film credits include Richard Jewell, I, Tonya, and Cruella as well. So he What'd you do? Be playing uh, Chris Farley. After bringing back CSI crime scene investigation with CSI Vegas, CBS is looking to revive another Jerry Bruckheimer television produced crime procedural from the 2000s. The network is in negotiations with Warner Brothers TV for a reboot of Cold Case, which aired on CBS for seven seasons. I don't, I don't want to, I don't think I want to see it. 03 to 2010, uh, set 15 years after the original series final episode, the Untitled Cold Case Reboot would follow a new team of tenacious detectives who investigate cold cases across the Southwest. Well, if they've waited all that time, it could be cold cold case even colder. Uh, this is a new location. The original cold case was set in Philadelphia. Mm. I, don't, I, I didn't don't remember that. Remember that. I, I, didn't, I, I did not know that. I did not watch Cold Case. Uh, the move, Your wife watches all these procedurals. She does, yeah. I'll have to ask about that. Uh, the move will allow the potential new series to introduce a new group of characters as they tackle unsolved homicides. Uh, the original series followed Detective Lily Rush, a homicide detective with the Philadelphia Police Department specializes in cold cases who was partnered for the majority of the show's run with Detective Scotty Valens. So we will see if that ends up coming to be or not. All right, uh, I think we can move on to some clips now. All right. Uh, although the character voices on the new Dora the Explorer series are all new, there's one that may seem familiar. Kathleen Herles, Herles the original Dora, is now playing Mommy. And here she talks uh, working on a high energy series. Here we go. Sometimes, you know, you don't have high energy all the time. But I think, especially with this show... It's easy to be in that high energy, to be in, you know, the the world of Dora. It's just always fun. You have boots, you have the music, you have all of the animal friends. Like, you know, there's so many elements to it that once you start going, I feel like you're just like in it and the energy just comes. Oh, shut up, woman. Uh, Dora <laughs> is streaming now on Paramount+. Plus. Next clip. Here you go, Steve. Fallout. Yeah! Based on the iconic video game series, based 200 years after the apocalypse. And in this clip, Walton Goggins talks about playing Cooper Howard, a once famous Hollywood actor who mutated into the ghoul. You just turn yourself over to an imaginary set of circumstances. And if you are playing the same person in two different time periods, there will inevitably be something that speaks to the other person over time. They both inherently in the story have a certain swagger and a certain charisma and uh, a practical kind of reasonable side to them that uh, is rooted in, in Cooper's upbringing. Yeah! He is so frigging good in this series. Fallout is streaming now on Prime, by the way. He's, I, I, he's it's just unbelievable. wonderful in I mean, everything he's in. He's playing really, a, 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 and I don't want to give too much away, but I cannot a, a recommend this series enough. Yeah, Steve but, was giving me the hard sell on it this morning, and you yeah. usually don't do that. You're, no. you're like, you're going to love you're this. You're going to love it. Yeah. Uh, then I, I got to get on board. You're going to love it. You watch some of it, too? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. How many episodes are out right now, Steve? There are eight. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm in five in. I'm only two in. Yeah. All right, done and done. With that, we will take a break. Come back in a second. Money, money. Lots of money. We are less than an hour away from your first shot at good money it, good money to see you. So we'll tell you what you need to do and when you need to do it. Stay put. We'll be right back. Preston and Steve. On 93.3 WMMR. Um, so tomorrow is Wawa Day. Oh. And uh, they dropped off some stuff uh, this morning to remind us that there's some uh, stuff uh, that is taking place to commemorate this. Uh, it was 1902, uh, 60 years ago that they formed. And so they're inviting... 1902? Yeah, they are invited. Uh, customers invited to kick off Wawa Day at its stores. Store located at uh, 6 and Chestnut from six, 7 to 8 a.m., uh, there's going to be a ceremonial coffee pour to kick off the day. And then they're sponsoring free admission to the National Constitution Center. Ooh. That's awesome. Tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I don't understand the sentence you just read. Uh, which part? It was 1902, Okay, years so ago. maybe that's wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, stop by to see the unveiling of a special Wawa history exhibit that will be on display at the museum through Sunday, April 21st. So here you go. It says, Wawa's history dates back to 1902, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then the first, they opened the first store on April 16th, 1964. So okay. that, that was when Ezekiel Wawa was processed through Ellis Island. 
Maybe yeah, that was 1902. it. 1902. I guess no, maybe they, they, the, uh, dairy they, dairy, they did the dairy farm in 1902, and oh. then they opened the first Wawa store. So they're celebrating the opening of the first Wawa store. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, in where, uh, 1964 in Folsom. Where would which we is, be without a Wawa? Casey's Dude, number one. I don't know where I would I, be. Honestly, I go so often. Yeah. It is such a on-the-way-home stop mm -hmm. so often. Mm -hmm. Or in a pinch. Why don't they sell club soda? What? <laughs> Wawa what? doesn't sell club soda. But Not even in the bottles? No, I don't. Really? Like sparkling water, I was able to walk away with. Well, we're going to have someone who has a little bit of pull coming. Though. Yeah, Wait, yeah. I'm going to have to talk to them about yeah. that. Okay, club soda, tonic water, sparkling water. What are What's the differences? The difference? There's definitely a di difference, at least for me, between club soda and tonic water because I don't like tonic. To me, hmm. that has like almost like a tangy, like a uh, some taste that I don't like. Yeah, the yeah. club soda, uh, I like for my margaritas, which I showed you, Preston, I was making yes. yesterday, got home, forgot I didn't have club soda. Margarita uh, time. So I had to use the sparkling water. I don't know the difference. Oh, here's I, the difference. Here, we, we have the, the answer here. Thank you, Connor. It says, club soda is infused with carbon dioxide and mineral salts. Similarly, seltzer is artificially carbonated, but generally doesn't contain added minerals. There you go. Tonic water is also carbonated, but contains added Quinine. What is quinine? Uh, it's actually used medicinally quite often. And oh. sugar, yeah. which means it provides calories uh, to you. So that's uh, that's the difference, I guess. So tonic actually has calories. Okay. There's a reason why well. Brits drank uh, gin and tonics uh, in the tropics, because uh, quinine, Steve, would help with malaria. Yep. Wow. wow. Man. How about that? Didn't expect to learn stuff this Friggin morning. Friggin' mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Kath, I don't know why they don't have club soda there. <laughs> I think maybe they just wear out. I don't know. But I found it odd. I was like, well, why can't I find club soda? <laughs> um, so anyhow, on Wawa Day, every store is going to recognize one customer, Day Brightener, hmm. to capture the special relationships between associates and customers and how those connections brighten days. I'm pretty peppy when I show up at my Wawa. The Day Brighteners will be represented with a sash, vintage mug, and a week's supply of uh, free coffee. I want a sash. You want to be the day brightener, Steve? I, I'm a pretty bright Wawa goer. Uh -huh. Germantown, shout out. Yeah? Yeah. So you come in, you just start, you talk to everybody. Right. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right, nice. Excellent. So uh, Wawa Day is tomorrow, so just heads up on that. But I think the, the Constitution Center thing is pretty dangerous. I pointed cool. out to a guy the other day, Press, and go, that's where the mini melts are. Ah, oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. I saw mini melts uh, yesterday, actually, at uh, uh, my local uh, beverage establishment. Actually, cool. that was on Saturday. Uh, they had a mini melts freezer in there. It's really a small world when you That's think about it. It is really is tiny. Uh, today, though, tomorrow's Wawa Day. Today's tax day. Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, it's it, such a wonderful day. Yeah, it's April 15th. And how many months a year are we working now to pay our taxes on average? <sighs> how many months? I think we I think we actually start earning money to keep. Do we work till April or how, how many? Because oh, they, wow. they always do that, that mm -hmm. ratio of how many months you work out of the year to actually just cover your taxes. I don't know. I do not know. I know nothing of taxes. I, it's the worst. So uh, if you, uh, I, and Preston, I we, we can right on this. We, I've never, uh, in a life that is r replete with moments in which I have felt like a moron, I never feel like a bigger moron when it comes down to tax time yeah. or finances or any of the things that I assume other human adults should be aware of. But <laughs> I, I slowly begin to find out that, no, a lot of human adults don't know a lot about this stuff. No, no. As a matter of fact, last year... We didn't realize it until tax day came that I had been taking so much money out of my uh, paychecks every single uh, couple of weeks. So we they had, were paying and, you back. We, well, fine. So when we got our tax return last year, it was it was awesome. But for the year leading up to that, it was like, what? So here's here's the dance with the devil. Yeah. I, f I found this out. <laughs> here's the dance with the devil that you do. If you're it, you're letting the the interest on that. Mm -hmm. You're not getting the interest on that. Yeah, the, My the, mindset is with you. I want take out as much because at the end of the year on this wonderful day, yeah. I, I don't want to get blasted with with uh, with uh, you know a, a, a bill. Yeah. But you know it's it, there's always some sort of rub or some sort of issue or some sort of something that ends up screwing up the master plan. Um, one of my best, beautiful, amazing, gorgeous friends is an accountant, and I literally no, I'm not. <laughs> drop everything at her house and go here. Here you, you go. go. <laughs> yep. It's the way to do it. Yep, she's so. the best. We have we have good people. We just uh, you know it, it, it's um, again I. I, I do my due diligence to get up to speed on it, but it is it's still this elusive thing. Well, let me ask. I saw some uh, tax trivia questions. 
Yeah, see I'll how, how, how well yeah. you know your taxes. Yeah. Now it's not like I'll take movie quotes for a hundred. No, this is this is more historical. So, okay. which of the following countries was the first to introduce a modern income tax? Was it the United States, United Kingdom, France, or Germany? Let's go with England. I'll default to England. United Kingdom. Yeah. Anybody else? Germany. Germany. Anybody else? United States. Okay, Kathy. Ooh, we got them all I was covered. Go. Say U.S. Okay. No, it's uh, Steve's right. United Kingdom. Oh. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, the United Kingdom introduced its modern income tax in 1799 as a temporary measure to cover the cost of the Napoleonic Wars. It became a permanent fixture in British fiscal policy in the 19th century. We need to raise money to fund the Napoleonic Wars. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what they did. We did this. All right, which of the following is not a common type of deduction that can lower your taxable income in the United States? Hookers. Uh, mortgage interest deduction, standard deduction, educational expenses deduction, or luxury goods deduction. I'm going to go with... Wait, Sam again, please. Uh, uh, mortgage interest, standard, educational expenses, or luxury goods? I don't know. <laughs> and it's the one, the one that's most what? Not that, deductible. Not a common type of deduction that can lower your taxable income. I know one that is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the first one is. Yes. Mortgage interest. That's right. Yeah. All right. What about standard educational expenses or luxury goods deduction? I'm going to go with luxury, luxury goods. Yeah, luxury it goods. seems frivolous by its very... And it is. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There's no standard deduction category called luxury goods. I see you taking off $1,000 on bugles. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Yes. And they look like little claws when yeah. I put them on my fingers. <laughs> they are, they are yeah. considered a luxury because they're so fun. <laughs> and then the last uh, question I have for you is what type of tax system does the United States employ? Annoying. Where the tax rate increases <laughs> as the taxable amount increases. Is that a flat tax, regressive tax, proportional tax, or progressive tax? Proportional. 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 Right. Proportional. Proportional. Progressive, you bitches. No. Really? Yes. So uh, I've always been fascinated with my limited intellect, with the, <laughs> with the flat All tax right. um, uh, concept. You've been fascinated I've with your limited intellect. I've heard people who appear to be smart and uh -huh. have various degrees on the walls behind them on their Zoom calls mm. uh, that seem to suggest it's, it's an interesting option. Mm. I don't know. You know, I just, um, I, I, no matter what, I've, I feel I'll, I'll, you know, you get your ass kicked no matter what. Yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, that's kind of the case. But I don't know. I'm I'm in the dark. Fortunately, I have somebody who knows how to handle that type of thing. And uh, my wife goes. Uh, it's the last couple of months are, are just yeah. yeah. She's focused on that. You guys um still do the extension or no? Um, we haven't been. No. Okay. Yeah, we for years we didn't file till October. Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, and all you have to do is your your accountant can do that for you. Okay. Yep. Can set it up for you. So. You end up paying. What is it? Five percent of money owed. Now, obviously, if you're getting money back, you can file all the extensions you want. Right. It ain't gonna matter. Yeah. I did mine like at the beginning of March this year because I just I want to get it over oh, with. So and I, 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 most of the time, <coughs> I know that I'm, or at least I hope anyway that I'm gonna get a refund. So for my mindset is get the refund as soon as possible. Yep, do that. Now there's another there's another chore that happens this time of year, and this is uh, spring cleaning. Oh, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. spring cleaning. I I saw people obviously yesterday, <laughs> out power washing yes. and and doing those types of things it's and power uh, washing my tax returns. I, uh, I I you know what I don't mind spring cleaning either. No, because you're it. just getting ready for. A great time of year. Fun. You're getting yeah. set. You're getting out. You're throwing out all the refuse. I'll tell you what it also is. The weather is usually very amenable to doing stuff around the house. And you've been inside right. for so long that getting out and, and opening up the doors and doing that Butterfly. type of stuff is great, yeah. man. I There's like it. a three-week period uh, in the spring and in the fall where you don't have to have the AC on or the heating on. And I love those three weeks. They can have the windows open. like, And it's just... You don't have to run either one of them. It's oh, yeah, you have the windows open until you're dying and you can't breathe in the middle of the night. No. That's me. Oh, because of allergies? allergies? Yeah. yeah. No. So they see Kathy just sitting in her house stewing about the seltzer water at Wawa. Uh, I don't Son ever, of a bitch. I don't ever go with, uh, with the 
HVAC unit not running in the really? house. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love Like this morning, I turn, I'm like, okay, it's going to be a warm day. AC is coming on. Damn yeah. right. But don't, uh-huh. Do you have like, I have like a switch in the basement. So if I, like at this time of year where, you know, and then we're going to be in like, you know, the 50s later on, like when you have to go from AC to heat, I have something I need to switch downstairs. So I have to go down and do that before mm. I turn the AC on. So we no, don't have. doesn't do that. I don't know what it is, yeah. but it, it, it literally is a switch and it says summer, winter. Okay. And oh, you wow. just move That's it. as easy as it gets. Yeah. yeah. I didn't uh, say it was yeah. difficult. I just, I have to go in the basement <laughs> and do it. Do we it. have inverters, which are the units that are up on the walls, which are, it, it's the, you but know. But is that heat too? Yeah, oh, you can heat with that, but we, oh. we're not, you'd go broken a day heating oh, all oh, okay, electric. Okay, okay. But, but I mean, yeah, so uh, we, uh, it's a lot more um, specific. We don't turn on the entire house. Yeah. Yep. So uh, spring cleaning, apparently uh, 95% of adults say they may not like doing the work, but they, it is important to get it done. Obviously, this is a, uh, a research that was done by Stanley Black & Decker. He's good. Uh, the Spring Home Refresher Report is out offering insights into the cleaning habits of people. More than half, 59%, plan to handle indoor spring cleaning themselves. Overall, 81% of respondents will be taking on do-it-yourself projects this spring and most lo- are looking forward to the gardening and landscaping oh ones. Oh so, yeah. so I've been <laughs> oh mulch yeah. case. Mulch. I got mulch works over the house. Uh, the mulch looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, natural lawn. The, the lawn is popping, and uh, you know a couple uh, mows, a little trimming up. It's looking really good. The Pornhub help out or anything? Pornhub was fantastic. Okay. Because when you sometimes you need to rub one out. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, yeah. yeah. gardening is stressful. <laughs> I never. I'm gonna be back. I never feel the hey, I'm not getting that. Wi-Fi behind the hedges. <laughs> um, the only thing with the gardening, because I get excited about my flowers, and I take my ride out to Lancaster, get everything I need, come back, plant it all, is um, back pain. Like that's yeah. being bent over and do because I plant everything myself. So uh, that's what I was thinking of doing a little bit yesterday because I have some tulips and stuff like that where I, I want to put the bulbs in the ground. And I was like, uh, I don't know if I feel like my lower back hurting right now. Mm. Our tulips are planted mm. and they look lovely. Um, I saw this thing on Instagram the other day. Yeah, last night, as a matter of fact, it is this. Uh, this essentially, it's a glue epoxy that you spray down onto your mulch, uh, so that after your mulch is all laid down, everything's good to go. So that, like, when you use your leaf blower to like blow things, uh, the mulch stays what? completely Stop. and totally intact. Does it actually intact. look still look it's... like the mulch? That's what it looked like. Can to I me. tell you something though? Yeah. What's it called? Oh, I don't remember. There's the no way that's good for the environment. I, I, right. That's what I was thinking. Are you going to... Yeah. Or your pets. Case. Do you use pesticide for weed killer? Or? No. No, nah, me neither. I don't no. like it. Hell so, no. I'm telling you. Uh, I don't just... I'm not just... I don't... I'm, mulch I, I, I liked it so much, I bought the company. No, yeah. Mulch works. Uh, actually, their mulch lays... It's, it, it's not chemicals in it. Yeah. It's a natural weed suppressant, and it it's heavier. It doesn't... Any of the 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 weed uh, uh, the leaf blowers, it doesn't kick it up. It's, it, uh, eventually, it works well. and mine moves around. It, so. Eventually, like once it Man, dries out either. and stuff, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, called, it's called mulch glue. Mulch by the way. glue. Yeah, I'm gonna look up and see how safe it is. Yeah, what's it made of? I'm gonna let you know. Give me a minute. Uh, right. Go ahead. I have Talk never heard stuff. of that before. Mulch glue. I can, I can only imagine it's wonderful. Yeah, right. For the environment. <laughs> Mulch and uh, rock bond is non-toxic and pl- completely safe for kids and pets. What? Do you, there you go. When do you so? When it's got to cost a thousand dollars. When do you start <laughs> your, your no, sprinkling? Like your lawn sprinkling. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's that? Say? When do you start your lawn sprinkling? Uh, so mid May. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Whenever the guy comes and turns it on. Okay. <laughs> All right. I hear you. It's like forty six bucks, thirty bucks. It's not that expensive. Okay. Yeah. I wonder how yeah, it's many. It's like forty dollars a a container. Uh, yeah, how many you'd need for all of yeah. your mulch? It's like, dude, we're looking hey. at a video of that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, made from asbestos and <laughs> yeah, it uranium. Does, it does not look like it's, a safe. No, it looks me. like you're 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 putting you're you're icing your oh, lawn. And they use it for they use it for rocks. They too. used it in Vietnam. Be, that would be good down the shore, so all the kids don't kick the rocks all over the place. No, you. The thing no. about mulch, though, is that it needs to breathe. Like, it needs to be moved around some. It, it's better for the plants if uh, you don't have it all right at the base of the tree or base of the plants, like your rhododendron and or azalea. Uh, so it, you don't want too much mulch there. Okay. Trust me. Uh, let's see. Some folks will be busy, busy according, to this, uh, according to this survey, with home improvement with the kitchen, bathroom, and backyard Actually, the backyard is uh, topping the list. Uh, so the front yard is the front of the house. 
Okay. That would be the, yeah. the front right. portion of the home. Yes, would be the front yard. I'm not a yard. Really yeah. well versed in this. Uh, YouTube is a valuable resource. 69% of adults use it for guidance on new projects. While half, 51% uh, of Gen Z turn to TikTok for do-it-yourself inspiration. I can see that. Uh, do you? It is. It is it was, as you're saying, I think it's legitimately a a, a fun. Um, you feel productive. Yeah. Um, so uh, to me. The go-to source for just about anything is YouTube. Yes. Anything. Without question. Without question. Yep. Uh, and I know, I know people who cannot watch a video and, and learn how to do it from the video. They need to read it. Oh, really? That's how, it, that's how it works for them. Mm. Now, I can read something. I've read directions. I'm very good at that. I'm very good at following directions. But the, seeing it done... Yeah. With someone who and on YouTube is using exactly what you're using or has the same sort of environmental conditions, it's a godsend. Yeah, I'd rather do that any yeah. day. Uh, watch someone actually demonstrating how to do something. Uh, I'll probably, I'm going to do the, the garage is my big thing. So the garage is surprisingly, well, I haven't done the, the switch over fully, so it's now my staging area. When the garage is in perfect shape, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. All is right. All is right. God is in his heaven. And you and I agree, when you're done... You gotta look at it. Sometimes you go out and just look at just it. Sit there. Mm -hmm. Just spend a little time in the garage mm -hmm. for a little while. Lord, you, of, Lord of the garage. Yeah. Where, do you, where do you put your hands when you do that? On the hips? That's a good question. On my um, balls. It, <laughs> sometimes I do one backhand on the on the left hip and yeah. gaze yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> or you can ball your fists up yeah. and shove them into the yeah. the, the, in the uh, back and the small of the back. Yeah. 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 You got a little yeah. stretch when you do it, Preston. Mm. Yep, absolutely. I'm yeah. more of a arms crossed. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. yeah. Look what you just you're, did. You're more like uh, the king of Siam. Yeah. Behold. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Behold what I have done. Because I just did it a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm well, not super happy with everything because uh, I'm, there needs to be a massive purge. And I just didn't have the time or uh, I didn't. Is that where you, you dress up in costumes and murder your neighbors? No, no, no. What is that? Oh, that's oh, the that's, purge. That's yeah. the purge. So, no, so this is me just getting rid of toys that the kids don't play with anymore and, you know. So we have our, our purges are, we're doing a mug purge. Oh, jeez. To clean up that cabinet. Oh, God. Mug purges are great. <laughs> That's really, um, Steve. Get a um, nerve there. Should, I, if you want, I can come, oh, over. come on over. I know. Uh, yeah. A mug purge. Yes. Mug purge. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I I do it in secret sometimes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. So we're they doing a no, mug purge. Look at this, Kathy. We don't just worry. got two. I know. Wawa mugs. And they're great. Yeah. And that's the thing. You want yeah, to keep them, and they'll they they've got to go in the cabinet, so others have to go. How many ounces is that? Because I think that a mug looks like an eight ounces or less. It's like 12. what's the point? Okay. It says it on the bottom, but uh, yeah, Casey, it does look kind of small. I agree. That's like a mug. That's like a shot mug. This would be good for wine, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> but I have so many of those the wine ones too. Yeah. Uh, I also I did a pint glass uh, purge as oh. well. That was pretty yeah. good. <clears throat> so yeah. How okay. many were stolen? Stole? No, no, uh, no. They're like the free ones we get here. Half oh, of them were MMR pint glasses, which were great. <laughs> but, oh yeah. But when, drive. It, when the uh, yeah, like if it started to fade away, I was like, all right, it's time to go. What's yeah. your biggest wine glass? How big is your biggest wine? Oh, glass? I have a wine glass. Um, <laughs> my friend gave it to me in like a basket for the holidays yeah. uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know how big it is, but it like I think it a two I could probably yeah. <laughs> I can't pick it up and hold it with one hand. Like I have to secure it with the other hand just to make two sure. Hands. How but many I, glasses for a I does a bottle? Think, <laughs> That's what it, I think it it will it will uh, hold the entire bottle. Yeah. I never did that, but I think that's what it is. You have to do that just one time. <laughs> oh just God, I know such a headache. I'm going to get this thing up on uh, Amazon that Connor pulled up here. I oh, would love that. It's six, 6,500 milliliters. <laughs> wow. Kathy's birthday is uh, August 25, yeah. so uh, Steve, uh, you got Kathy's birthday present already. You know what I hate? Like when I because uh, I just got a cup, right? It, I got it in December. I'm like, this is going to be my cup. And and it's a like great a, cup for coffee. No, no, oh. no, no, no. Just a regular oh, like drinking. iced tea cup or whatever. Okay. And then like I'll come home and somebody's drinking out of my. I'm like, why? <laughs> why do you have my cup? Why are you drinking out of my cup? Why do you live here? Yeah. Well, like, what is the point? It, it says doing? it says fish on it. Like. <laughs> no. Two girls using my cup. <laughs> what is in that cup? <gasps> what are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm gonna ghost you, mother <laughs> So you don't you don't like someone using your your favorite cup? Well, it's clearly like I got this thing. It's mine. I bought it. Does it say it. best dad in the world? No, it says fish on it, which is essentially saying best dad in the world. Yeah, but we and know whose mug that is. It's a great cup, and then I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just have to go to my Dunkin' uh, cup. I don't use 
Claire's mugs. She has a particular style that she likes, and, and I have my style. We both... The, and, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're badass. You don't we know both anything. We both used Yetis to drink our tea over the weekend. There you <laughs> go. It's amazing. But, like, I okay... In my house, Steve, I'll go into my bathroom. In in my my my, my with my mug. No. Oh. And there'll be uh, the 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 toothpaste will be gone. And I'm like yesterday, I know that there was a full thing of toothpaste in here. So like, what the kids will do is like, well, this isn't yours anymore, and they'll take that toothpaste and bring it into their well, bathroom. You know oh what happened? God. They ran out in their bathroom. I know, but yeah. why not just go to the little no, closet, no, no. The, the cabinet that has all the toothpaste in You're it? You're asking logical questions yes. with no logical answers. Uh, yeah. But that's why yours is now gone, too. And they probably had a dirty cup, which is why they took the, your fish cup. <laughs> they probably brushed their teeth using your fish mug. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, for a while, I was losing a uh, hairbrush. What? Stolen regularly. Just taken out of the bathroom? Taken from me. And 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 you know what it's like at hour, hour of yes. the day, getting up and going. I'm like, Where's I'm rummaging rush? through drawers. I'm looking through it, and, and, the and they just kept, uh, I don't know what had happened. So I finally went out, and I bought like 15 brushes. <laughs> Everyone has four. And I put them in a box, and I'm like, here, yeah. I only want one. This ought to cover me for a couple of months. Uh, Preston, just uh, what a month ago, uh, I was in Costco and we had bought a uh, thing of toothbrushes. Okay, there's like ten of them in this box. <laughs> They're all gone. What? How? Where? Are people? Re are they throwing? T They're that's cleaning great, their shoes with them. That's a great question. Somebody didn't know where their toothbrush was for the moment. And instead of like I don't know, lifting a towel, they wanted a new they, one. They each just night. go. Let me just go grab a new one. I had a revelation about toothbrushes not that long Ooh, ago what is because it? I would uh, I, I would use a toothbrush forever, and uh, not until it was completely frayed out yeah. and, and useless, but down to just the handle. I, and then I realized I had a stockpile of toothbrushes that I would get from the dentist because yeah. you know they they give them to you when you yeah. go to, to the dentist. I'll give you like two of them on the way home, and I, it never dawned on me. Dumbass, when you get a new one from the dentist, yeah, yeah, yeah. open it and one. use it <laughs> yeah. and throw out the old one. Yeah. Have you and been, so I'm doing that now. Have you been to the dentist in a while? A um, couple months. Did you get a toothbrush? I did. Okay, because my dentist, remember we, we talked, talked about, about this, this. And I still can't find those Dr. Petula, my dentist, would gladly hook you up with a, a toothbrush. No, but they're not the same. They, I've had a bunch of dentists send me toothbrushes. Thank you to everyone who sent them. I do use them, but they're not the ones I'm looking for. I still and can't mine find actually them. has a holder for a wine glass can. <laughs> what? So do you know the brand? The brand? of the uh, one you yeah. like? I forget. I'd, I'd have to, yeah, it was, I think it was Colgate um, and it was just this like super soft bristle mm. and uh, yeah, I, and everyone's like, oh, I have them. I know where they are. It, no, that's not, not I can't find them. I don't like the toothbrushes that my dentist gives me. Oh. Uh, yeah, they're they're not good. They end up just collecting the barbecue dust. cleaners. <laughs> Leave them for your kids. We, we will keep uh, a toothbrush on the kitchen sink for little detailed cleaning uh, yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. um, Shoot, you need I... to clean some dentures that were just left there? No. <laughs> 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 that was nice of you, Preston. Uh, you ever, uh, Butch, I'm going to clean your dentures for you. Don't you worry. Well, Casey, I made a joke about the shoes, but I'll use old uh, the old toothbrush to clean shoes. Yeah. Really? You yeah. guys ever brush your teeth in the kitchen sink? It I do not. Feel it right. feels weird. Yeah. It tastes a little I did, different. Yeah. I did Something's once going on. when someone was, we had a guest who was using the bathroom, yeah. my bathroom, and so I did. And then I also, I uh, gently cleaned my anus. Okay. Mm. I feel like it tastes a little bit different and there's something going on with the water action that, that throws me off. I think it could be psychological, but there could be something to it. I don't know. Probably uh, an enti entirely different water system. Maybe. <laughs> Listen, if you need your dentures cleaned, let me know. Come on over. I'll, I'll do it for you. Can you put them in like, can you can you put those in like the same sort of pouch that you'd put your uh, like very delicates in the clothes washer? And throw them in your there. Denture. I don't know. This is my, my mother-in-law would leave her dentures <laughs> in the, next to the what, kitchen, oh, kitchen right. sink. If you got back at her though, you'd put her bras on. It would, it, it drove me crazy. Do they leave other stuff around? Dude, you just need to put them on one time. Be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Get you out of Get you out of Dude, one of the, Kathy, one of the grossest things I can imagine is taking someone else's dentures, dentures and putting them in my mouth. I think I would, I would vomit. Okay, Preston, I, watched I would you absolutely off of the toilet. I would vomit. You're with me on this one. This, oh, the I'm scene in Tropic Thunder. Oh, my God. Yeah. This old sort old lady of. lady takes yeah. her teeth out and yeah. gets into Ben Stiller. It's oh, so my gross. God. It's just, I can't, I don't know why. Well, I guess I do know why. Because yeah. it's gross. Gross. <laughs>
It's disgusting. So anyway, today's tax day. Today's tax day. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. And do your spring cleaning. Uh. We should probably take a break. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, you know what? We got money to give away uh, for Good Money It. And this is uh, only our second week at this, by the yes. way. So we're excited to have more chances for you to win a thousand bucks. We will return and get into the bizarre file as well. So make sure you stay with us. We will be back in a moment with all of that. Preston and Steve. All 90. Get you a thousand bucks. Uh, we want to thank Wawa for dropping off some goodies this morning. Wawa is uh, sponsoring free admission to the National Constitution Center on Wawa Day tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They just want to get the word out so you know ahead of time that you can do this. And also visitors are going to enjoy some free food and beverages from the Wawa Community Care Vehicle. And you can take a journey back in time and learn about Wawa's history and how the convenience chain started as a dairy delivering milk to door-to-door uh, -to -door 100 years ago. Uh, the Wawa <laughs> History Exhibit is going to be on display at the museum through Sunday, April 21st. We were saying it earlier, and again, I, <laughs> as I was saying it, I was just kind of lighthearted saying it, but the truth of the matter is, how many times a week do I end up going to Wawa? Yeah. I mean, it, they're a staple. Yeah. It's a vital part of yes. the existence yeah. in this region in particular, and spreading across the country. Of yes. Yes. Uh, I also want to remind you about uh, the President Steve Blood Drive coming up. We've had the Save the Date, which is going to be on Friday, June 14th. And we need to give you a heads up on this now because the last day for active donors for you to donate blood and still be eligible to do so at our event is coming up soon. It's April 19th. So that is this week. That's the last day that you can donate and still be able to contribute at the I Bleed for Preston and Steve Blood Drive. And we've got two locations again this year, Live Casino and Hotel in Philly and the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center at Oaks. And we'll be broadcasting from the o Expo Center uh, for that particular morning. Uh, you can click on events at WMMR.com, complete details there. And it's brought to you by the American Red Cross. And then the other charity thing I want to mention, Kathy's Cuts, benefiting wigs for kids. And that's coming up on Monday, May 6th. And there's three locations this time around, Gravity Hair Salon in Ambler, David Arnold Salon in Jenkintown, and Vibe Salon in Mount Laurel. And, Kath, have you checked to see how things were coming along for sign-ups? You know what? I didn't check this morning. Okay. I'm going to do it. I'll do it right now. But you need to sign up as soon as you can because these things fill up quickly. Appointments are from 6 to 10 a.m. And you can go to PrestonandSteve.com and uh, get the information. There's a list of donor guidelines you need to know about as well. Uh, Duncan's going to be offering up the uh, the coffee and refreshments. You get a style when you That's are right. done. Yeah, it's important to, important to stress that. You're going to get a really cool haircut. And True Beauty Concepts uh, set you up with this cool gift bag. And we have a Kathy's Cuts t-shirt this year, too. So uh, you want to do that now because you do not want to miss your chance. So. Make sure you do Oh, it. yeah. Okay. Um, so there are spots still available at all three locations, um, but they are filling up. Mount Laurel location only has a few left. Um, sorry, no, uh, Am the Ambler location, uh, Gravity, has only a few left. There are some in Mount, uh, in Mount Laurel at Vibe, and then uh, Jenkintown only has a few left, too. So, okay. yeah, make sure you get on, get on there and sign up. All right. It is uh, now 8 o'clock. We can now do this. 93.3 WMMR, Philadelphia. It's time for a Good Money It keyword. All right, the word is luxury, L-U-X-U-R-Y, and we're going to give you about 15 minutes and 15 minutes after the hour to enter that. Three ways to do it, WMMR.com or the MMR app, or you can text it to the special contest short code number, which is 45911. One random entry wins $1,000 in our company-wide contest. Each winner gets a call from Beasley, so make sure that you answer your phone. Uh, all the contest rules available at WMMR.com, and it is sponsored by McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. So the word again is luxury, L-U-X-U-R-Y. Enter it, and hopefully you're going to win. Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre File. Brought to you by A.D. Moyer Lumber Incorporated, trusted experts since 1939. A.D. Moyer Lumber is your professional source for decks, windows, doors, kitchens, millwork, and more. And you can visit them on the web at admoyer.com. So a, this is a messed up story. A 30-year-old tourist was struck dead by a huge church bell during a Spanish tradition. Oh my God. Yeah, the freak accident happened when the victim was visiting the tower of a church in El Pinel de Bray. 
Uh, the man died instantly when a bell, which was ringing to announce the ceremony, struck him on the head. So he was up in the bell tower. They were Yes, in accordance with the custom, a group of residents climbed the bell tower, including the victim. Once at the top, a bell hit the man who received a strong blow to the head, causing him to, uh, like it killed him instantly. Jeez. Yeah, doctors uh, tried without success to revive him. A fire crew also rushed to the scene to recover his body. A person on the scene with medical experience also tried to save his life, uh, but without success. Uh, police have opened an investigation into the incident. Uh, the mayor of the town said that there could be changes in the tradition of ringing the bell from here on out. Yeah, once it proves lethal. Yeah. A woman who left over $1,000 in tips at a Florida taco restaurant because she thought she was going to be swept up in the biblical rapture on the day of the eclipse, now wants a rapture refund, claiming that the restaurant defrauded her. What? A server at the restaurant said on Reddit that the woman was nice but kept trying to proselytize me. She said her bill came to $40, to which she added a $300 tip and wrote on the receipt... In case you don't rise on the 8th. Uh, the woman returned a few days later and tipped another server $777. When the rapture didn't happen, the woman returned to try and get her tip back. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> accusing the restaurant of changing the tip amount. Well, fast forward to today. She's back at it to get adamant that her tips were somehow fraudulent and that we tampered with them, the, the Redditor said. Uh, he cla her claims of fraud are literally impossible, they wrote. We bring the card reader to the table. It is the guest who decides the tip amount by either pressing a preset option or entering a custom one before hitting pay. And that's exactly what she did. So, so here's this poor woman who believes that she will get uh, all of the benefits of the rapture if she bribes uh, waitresses at a Mexican restaurant. Well, no. It all seems to make sense. She No, she's saying she's not going to need her money when the rapture happens. Uh -huh. So she's like, here, I'm going to give it to you. In that's case what she's saying publicly. You don't yeah. get yeah. called. Yeah. So it's uh, physically impossible, they said, for us to manipulate the tip amounts. She said, both my coworker and I have already received our tips with our paychecks, and we obviously have to pay income tax on them. Returning the money to her at this point is literally impossible since we don't actually have all the money. So go to hell. hell. You know, you may not you may not want to put all your money in that rapture bucket in getting ready for that. Dr. Ronaldo Ortiz has been found guilty of injecting dangerous drugs into IV bags at the Baylor Scott and White Surgicare in North Dallas. Oh, man. The jury reached the a guilty verdict after about seven hours of deliberations. There were 11 patients who suffered cardiac emergencies. It was and, seltzer water, Kathy. And a fellow <laughs> doctor, Dr. Melanie Casper, died from the IV bags. God. Wow. So it's pretty messed up. Uh, I mean, it's messed up all the way around, but his reasoning, his supposed reasoning is just ridiculous. It wasn't the rapture, was it? No, Video captured Ortiz repeatedly placing IV bags into a warmer minutes before nurses took the bags out of the same location. Minutes after the bags were used, patients suffered cardiac emergencies. Prosecutors said that Ortiz turned IV bags into poison bombs that exploded on unsuspecting people. Over the course of the case, prosecutors established a potential motive for the tampering. They believe that Dr. Ortiz was retaliating for being disciplined in 2018 and again in 2021 and 2022. So he just randomly, were these people targeted? Well, I'll explain. Okay. So in May of 2022, records show one of his patients had to be resuscitated with CPR. The prosecution said that Ortiz's two businesses were losing money and faced even more financial trouble if he was stopped from practicing at the Baylor Scott and White Surgicare in North Dallas. Prosecutors said that Ortiz put the dangerous drugs in the IV bags to try to show that emergency situations happen to a lot of doctors. Ah, see, it's nothing special because everyone has it happen. There you go. So, there we go. So, so I'm actually a good doctor. So the doctor that died, Dr. Casper, she had been treating herself with one of the IV bags at home when she was sick. In the trial, her widower testified how he tried to revive her with CPR before paramedics arrived, but was unable to. Uh, Ortiz faces life in prison, Please by the way. A murderer. For that. That's just insane. All right, now this story was scant on details, but there's no way that I couldn't include this in the Bizarre File. This is out of Kinston, North Carolina. A man was arrested after a months-long investigation into activity related to 
Uh, mechanophilia. Me- oh, boy. Sexual attraction to vehicles or machines. Oh, We've on. heard about this before where people now, literally hump cars. This doesn't go into any details. <clears throat> about well, it's got to be the tailpipe. Any incidents, but Walter McRae, 52 years old, was seen on video tampering with a victim's vehicle. Yeah. In April of this year, uh, McRae was arrested and jailed, and he is in the county jail. He is charged with one count of felony stalking, five counts of damage to property, and five counts injury tampering with a vehicle. And I don't have any other yeah. details other than that. Tampering is snapping off a wiper blade. He but, was humping the cars. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> I think that was uh, mechanophilia. Yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting. It, what, definitely bizarre foul were there. Okay, quick question. Yeah. What, what would I bang? What, what car would you bang? Oh, what car would yeah. I bang? Wow. Mm. I'd have to look at the tailpipes. <laughs> it's really yeah, what it's you about. Know, you know, to be By honest. the way, my car has some really solid, humpable tailpipes. Okay. Yeah. My vet did. Dual exhaust, yeah. Yeah, my vet had four uh, exhaust pipes that would look yeah. pretty hot. Oh, man. Yeah. You could have a, you have a chrome. Yeah, you could Very have a bangable, bangable tailpipe. A group thing, an orgy. Yeah. Yeah. Like a nice, rusted out tailpipe. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. No, wow. no, no. Yeah. You get locked jaw. Casey's going for the hooker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. you, you were with an un- I was with an unclean car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a little bit more time for you. About seven minutes for you to enter the word luxury for good money it, good money to see you. So you want to do that now, luxury, L-U-X-U-R-Y. And again, you can enter through WMMR.com. You can go through the MMR app or you can text it to 45911. But make sure you pick one of those options and you do it now. It's brought to you by McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Good luck to you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay put. WMMR. It is everything that rocks. It's about 22 minutes after 8 o'clock. President Steve Show. Going up to 80. Low 80s today. Like 81, 82 degrees. Oh. And uh, lots of sunshine. So you should enjoy today. Tomorrow, 74 and sunny. We do cool off this week. Um, Thursday's high is going to be about 55. But I think we're bouncing back after that. Uh, we're going to take a look at your traffic. See what's up so far this morning. Kathy, some stuff happening. Yeah, Northeast Extension still closed southbound between Quakertown and Lansdale. This is an accident that's uh, out there. So uh, south on the Northeast Extension closed. Blue Route northbound jams 95 to the Media Bypass southbound. From the Media Bypass to Baltimore Pike. Schuylkill eastbound, so it's 202 into Belmont Heavy, the Boulevard to the Vine westbound. Banner Avenue to South Street, City to Belmont, the Blue Route out to Gulf Mills. 95 southbound jams Academy to Bridge Street. Uh, that is an accident that's out there. And then uh, from the Betsy Ross Bridge into the Vine Expressway, Ridley Park to Highland Avenue. Pennsylvania Turnpike westbound slows Virginia Drive to Fort Washington, 422 eastbound heavy Oaks to First Avenue, and then you're jammed on the 30 bypass eastbound, 340 to 113. Uh, In Delaware, Route 1 northbound at 13, that accident cleared. In New Jersey, 42 north slows 41 to 295, 55 northbound backing up Deptford to 42. This traffic report brought to you by AAA. Even the most skilled drivers experience mishaps on the road. That's why you should join AAA and get the peace of mind that comes having that comes with having expert roadside assistance. That's just a tap away. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, I just thought of something. You thought um, of something. So, so yeah, I did because You're the ponderer. Well, it kind of uh, it plays off something we talked about a long, long time ago. Uh, and I was wondering this the other day, and I didn't know if this might be worth throwing out to the audience if, if people are still doing this type of thing. But Nick once told us a story about how uh, you guys had a television that you didn't turn off for a decade plus. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, no, no, it wasn't a decade, <laughs> but it was a long time. It was years, though, right? It was like a year. It was a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then maybe we took some calls from people who had their TV so. on for like oh, yeah. seven or eight years. Well, the, the problem was if we turned it off, we couldn't turn it back on. So uh, it was <laughs> yeah. one of those things where we're like, we're just going to deal with this for as long as we can until we can afford to buy a new one. And Did then eventually- you just mute it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just turned it down at the end of every day and uh, waited to, until the next day and started watching again. What it's- made me think of it is it's like a couple of weeks ago. So we, we've had a hot tub. We bought a hot tub like <clears throat> a decade ago. Uh, and um, we, other than- Turning it off to change the water, we've never turned it off. It it's runs. on perpetually, it runs? constantly, all the time. Because we use it year right, round, right? And I realize I'm like, this thing has been running for a decade, and the part that 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 we had to get replaced was was part of the like the uh, the electronic, the board, right? And so uh, the guy came over and fixed. He's like, the plumbing on this thing is great. It'll just keep going. He's like, this is just this thing burned out. He's like, and we replace this, you're going to be good to go for another, you know, a, a really. It long just time. runs for. 
It just runs all the time. Yeah, but huh. you have to. Otherwise, right? It would like yeah, it gets, algae would form mm-hmm. and yeah, or, demons. Or it'll go, it gets cold and then you have to turn it back on. Then that takes hours to warm back up. So we just run it all the time. But it started me thinking, I'm, I was wondering, just kind of a throwback topic. If there's anybody who's ha- who has something that is on all the time and has been on all the time at home, especially if it's like a TV or something that doesn't need to, <sighs> to be, be on. I could see right? a light yeah. A lot of people might have just, just even a light that they leave on perpetually in the right. house. Uh, 215-263-WMMR if you have something like that. And well, na- and now uh, the LED lights take up way less right, yep, right. power, so that's not too bad. I leave my rock polishing kit on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, remember those, those things? things? Oh my Incredibly God. Incredibly loud, yeah. So freaking loud. I'm trying to think of something, but I mean, I grew up in, like my dad was constantly shutting lights off. So like everything was turned off. Everything was unplugged. I think that's so, our rule. That's our yeah, law that so we have to I, I do think that. That's, that's just kind of how I live. So I, I, I can't, I can't think of anything that I keep on or even. So it was always in. dark in your house? Oh, no, it, not that we were sitting in the yeah. dark. If you were in the room, it was Kathy, fine. But like, in here. you know, he would get so mad if like the the stairway light was yeah. on and nobody was upstairs. Kathy. Like, why is that light on? We don't need to see there. We're not over there. So you know, he was constantly shutting lights off. Yeah, that's a dad's job is to go in yeah, and turn yeah, those yeah. lights <laughs> off. Um, and and our house was the same growing up and kind of is the same now. Would you? I, I think this was you that told the story one time where like your dad would come into the room uh, in the summer and turn the air conditioning. Oh, off. Oh, in the middle of the night. Turn yeah. the, that was just to save money. But yes, turn the, our right. air conditioning <laughs> our air conditioners off because we had wall units growing up and so. Yeah, we'd wake up in the middle of August sweating to death because he had turned. He was like, it was freezing in your room. I'm like, no, I was yeah. actually comfortable. Yeah, I, okay. I kind of want that. Yeah. So I my I run my, and this is not per- perpetually on, but in the evening, I have the the uh, the AC, the uh, inverter in my room. I run it all year round. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep the room temperature at about 70, 71 degrees. Uh, what I want. I had the similar situation with Nick's TV, with my bedroom TV. Uh, where if you turned it off, if you turned it back on, it, it took a long time for it to turn on. And then when eventually it did turn on, it would just be like, like this like horrible Holy static, hell. right? And then that would last for a little bit and you would have to mute it until the TV basically like warmed up a little bit enough oh, wow. for it to have a like, like an Was it an old tube set? No, no, no. It was an LED or, Jesus. you know, whatever. Huh. But uh, What kind of radiation that thing was kicking out? I don't know what, but... Um, rather than deal with that stuff, yeah. you just left it on. Left it on. Yeah, just okay. left it on. How long did that last, you think? Um, yeah, probably about a year. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. All right. They don't me... build them like that anymore. No, but the funny thing is that TV is now on the bedroom floor of my of my bedroom, <laughs> and it's probably been there for like three years now. Uh, let me go to some calls. I have uh, Patty, who's on the line. Hi, Patty. Good morning. Good morning, Ed. Good morning to see you, Patty. What's up? Uh, well, I just called to tell you that I... My ceiling fans in all my rooms have been on for the past 13 years. Yeah, yeah. you know what? I could see that. A lot of texts coming in. Ceiling fans. Ex- exactly the same thing. It's people just leave their, it's people are saying that they moved into their home and they've never turned their ceiling fans off. I, I would say, <laughs> Preston, the, the ceiling, the so huh. the maybe it's not always on, but 80% of the year the ceiling fan in my bedroom is on. So, <laughs> Patty, this thing has been going for how, how many years did you say? I bought my house 13 years ago. 13 and years. Nonstop. And so, it, that's, is it, do you need that circulating air or is it just something you just let go? I just, it's a habit. Okay. It's a habit. All right. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Does, does it collect dust? I think if it's always spinning, to, right? That's a good question. Well, it does collect dust, so I do have to turn off the dust. But the majority of the time, like I said, I just never turn them off. Now, right. If you really want to be hardcore, dust it with it running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate right. that. Have a great day, guys. You too. You would think that at some point, you know, like a motor would burn out or something like that. Some we're things, talking about oh, 13 years of nonstop running. I think there's some wow. things that benefit from, you know, I think it's when you stop using some things that, um, you know, they're, they're more prone to break down. I think keeping it constantly running, yeah. some things... Uh, will benefit the device. Uh, of course, I'm probably incredibly wrong about that. There's a couple of texts coming in that says, uh, let's... Sorry, uh, Chris. Yeah, hold on. <sighs> uh, we have one of those lights in our laundry room where you have to pull the string to turn the light on and off. Well, my daughter started to yank on it when uh, she would go downstairs in the laundry room. 
Uh, she ended up breaking the string, and the string mm. was hardwired into mm. the, pre the, the previous owner. Uh, so that laundry room light has been on for over a year now, and the bulb still hasn't blown out, and there's no way of turning that off without hitting a breaker. Wow. So we just leave it on all the time. Yeah, I can see that. I have a pull string light, and and it's uh, and it's been this way for years. I have to I have to pull it very very Gently. slowly, uh -huh. <laughs> and I have to get it just right. It's like click 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 for it to stay on. Yeah, <laughs> and why have I never just because replaced it replaced it? Requires effort. I yeah. guess. Yeah, so. and, and yeah. effort means effort. I guess so. I, I'm the same way. Yeah, I have one one light. Um, in the basement that has unscrewed off of, so the bulb is hanging in its fixture off the thing. It's just two screws to put it back in. Yeah. Because it's the basement, I've never done it. It just hangs freely. <laughs> oh like, why? I know. Why? I know. Uh, we'll go next to uh, Ron. Hey, Ron, good morning. Good morning, Nick Preston. Good morning to see you, Ron. What's up, bud? First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to the YouTube crew. Oh, ah, definitely throwing some love out there. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fashionable. I'm the, I'm the furry that called a couple of um, years ago. I remember that. But, the what now? Okay, furry. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. All right. But anyway, so I have a gaming PC. Um, you know where I play uh, my video games on. Yeah. Well, back in, in December of last year, I had a bit of an emergency that caused me to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I had surgery, and in that surgery, I had to be put on an ECMO machine, which made me go into a coma. Mm. So I was in a coma from December to February. Um, at that time, I had, um, from that coma, I went to rehab from February to March. I just came home last month. And that whole time, I left my PC on. <laughs> The whole time. <laughs> By the time I got home, uh -huh. and I got um, I was able to go upstairs to my room, um, my PC was still on. I had to change screens because I had an image of the last thing I was playing stuck on my screen. You had burn in on the on the screen. How many tournaments did you win while you were in the? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Probably like one. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm surprised yeah, so. though that the like the if the game was still running that it didn't burn out the entire computer. Well, the game wasn't still running, but my screen was still oh, okay. on. Right. So my my computer it usually goes into sleep mode, but it didn't go into sleep mode. It was just on the whole time. Wow. And my fa my father who lives with me, he's an amputee as well, so he couldn't get to my room to turn the computer off. So he's just been sitting there on yeah. the entire four months. That Doing its thing. Yeah, I, I, wow. yeah, burn in would, wouldn't take even that a, a fraction of that before that happened. So you so. had to get a new monitor, I guess, right, Ron? Yeah, luckily for me, I had an old monitor. I just switched it out. Okay. All right. Thanks for the heads up, Ron. Appreciate it. And shout out to the uh, the YouTubers. We love it. Uh, I, I leave my, my laptop, my work laptop on pretty much year round. Do you? Mm -hmm. Like, it's always on. Only if we are going to take a lengthy vacation, I'll, I'll power down. Huh. But but I just, yeah, I just close the lid and leave it on. So I power down regularly because that's a good way also to, if someone's trying to gain access to your computer, and they can passively. By the way, yeah. your computer can be off and they can still gain access to it. But it's you know one, what? I, I do, at home, I do that too. I never yeah. really, I never turn, never really power it down. I just really? close it up and plug it in. If you're closing down the, 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 the it's you're able to do it. It should be yeah. not a problem. I'm, I'm really curious as to like whether or not I save more than five dollars a month by turning everything off and then turning it back on again. Because like for me, it's I guess sort of economically driven. And Kathy, just like your dad, my dad was the same way. Yeah. And like the unplugging of stuff, the turning of things off. I don't really know if I'm saving any damn money doing it. But the, my mindset is, well, I'm going to save something. You know? Yeah. Here's a text from somebody who says, "I have a PlayStation Four and I've never turned it off since the day I bought it six <laughs> years ago." Wow, <laughs> man. I, yeah, I, I turn, well, there's stuff you keep in standby mode, for example, yes. like a, like a receiver. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. just, it's just there ready to go. I will go to Mike next. Mike, good morning, bud. Uh, you guys are the best morning show in the, in the world, but uh, you do a lot of other things too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that? Is that from something? It sounds like it's from something. The hair, the hair metal band commercial. Oh! Yeah. Oh, yeah. that, yes. that was warrant. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 We do other. Oh, I love we do that. Other things we do other, too. Things, we do other too. things too, like rock and roll. Yeah, uh, it's good, good Mike. I like it. All right, what's up, bud? 
Uh, sorry to confuse you. Um, <laughs> so my daughter, yeah, my daughter has had an old, older TV, a flat screen TV, kept it on for years, four or five years or so. We actually moved recently, and then it kept. Um, we kept it on again at the new house. And wherever she has lived with this TV, her room was the hottest room. Yeah, in the house. In the house. No matter. Oh. Yeah, no matter how much air conditioning we got going or fans or whatever. Yeah. So I'm telling you, literally last week, I turned it off, like when she wasn't around, and her room was not hot. Right. So this TV was heating up her room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me let me tell you something. Yeah. People don't realize. So we have a 77 inch uh, OLED in the in the living room, and if you stand near it while it's been on for a while, you will feel heat coming off that thing. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, oh, that couldn't be the case. No, it is. But for like four years, she didn't turn it off once. No. Wow. She just kept it on. It would be on screensaver mode. Mm -hmm. I and it was, all this time, I was just heating up her room. Well, you know, they, they sell, like, like for example, Thanks, now Mike. there's a lot a lot of TVs, a lot of the, the LGs, and a lot of the OLEDs have uh, what they call a, a portrait or painting mode where you don't turn it off. It simply goes into a... It now becomes a painting on the wall. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That room must have been really hot. Jace's gaming computer does the same thing, and he'll play just for, like, you know, a couple hours after school or whatever it is, and it's hot in there. Mm. Like, I have to go in and open the window because it gets so hot. You know those uh, ribbon, like, LED lights that uh, yes. are all the rage? all the rage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my kids, that... Those were things that stayed on all the time. All the time. Yeah, like when I would come home at Even night. Even when they slept? Uh, when they slept, yeah. when they went to school, like it, they were just always on. It looked like I, my son was having a rave in his, <laughs> in his um, room. Do you know people who keep like lights like that outside their house on? Um, Cause I there's, mean, there's with, a house along my street, um, that, and it, they have sort of wonderful like decoration lights, but they're on. I was walking past. Recently, and I thought, oh, that it goes on with the timer at night. No, the lights are on all the time. All the time, huh? Yeah. Well, let me go to Eric. Hi, Eric. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning to see it. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning to see Good it. Good morning, it. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric, I got six stereo systems in my house. I moved here in Horsham in 2015, and it have been on the entire time. <laughs> six stereos in your house. And they're all on all the time. And they play WMMR ever since. There you nice. go. Nice. We, we're not going to argue with that. We think it's a bold move and a correct move. So you My just dogs know nothing else but that. <laughs> <laughs> so you just like having that sound on constantly. It's all the time. And then I'll watch videos and stuff, but it'll always be in the background. All right. We uh, completely approve of that and Thank recommend you. other people follow suit. Yes, please yeah, do. Dukes. <laughs> yeah, Dukes, <laughs> brother. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate the love. In fact, there's another WMMR call. I'm going to go to Pete. Hey, Pete, what's up, buddy? Good morning to see you, Eric. Good morning to see you, Eric. Good morning, Eric. It's all in there. Pete, what's up, bud? <laughs> So anyway, I have an old Glaupunk console stereo that my wife's grandma gave us like about eight years ago. Yeah. And I put it in the garage. It's old tube style. Wow. And every time I turn it off, it takes like forever for the tubes to warm up and for the stereo to turn on. It's got about eight different bands on it. So I keep it on all the time, but I turn the volume down and it's Glaupunk. So it's probably from the mid seventy or early to mid seventies. Wow! So it's an old vintage stereo. And that. you just keep you just keep that thing humming all the time. I keep it on all the time, locked on MMR, so my <laughs> dog can hear. So my dog listens to something when I'm not home doing the day. How, how many that. years do you think you've had it on, Pete? About six years. Six, six years. years. <laughs> so, but that shows you how those things were built. Yeah. You know, well, that you could true. keep it on for six years. Wow. Thanks, Pete. Uh, actually, Tim can explain a little bit um, why some electronics are best left on. All right. All right. Hi, Tim. You're on the air, buddy. Hey, you guys rock. Thank oh! you, my man. All right. So, you understand uh, a bit about electronics? I do. I'm an engineer. Perfect. All right. What can you tell us? So, so the reason it's actually, Steve is right, that it, it can be helpful to leave electronics on. What happens when um, electronics are on, they produce a lot of heat. Um, the solder joints inside expand, and then when you turn them off, they cool. But over time, those solder joints will start to crack, mm. and that crack will corrode, and then you get failures in those electronics. So if you leave them on, 
you're leaving the heat on all the time. Ah, so they're not cool. They're not expanding and contracting. Oh. Exactly. So there's not that fatigue that sets in. So what would be the most likely candidate to benefit electronically around an average house before uh, being left on an electronic device? Um, things that, that create a lot of heat. So like the old school TVs, like Nick probably had. Yeah. Um, that sort of thing. The more modern, like your iPads, laptops. Um, the, the, the technology behind the soldering has gotten better over time. Um, and they're not susceptible to that. Okay. Tim, did you hear my question earlier about like, uh, turning stuff off? Does it actually end up saving you any real money? If you count the replacement cost, maybe, but probably not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, probably probably not. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I mean, it, it, but, but if you were to leave all the electronics on in your home, right. I mean that's gonna that's gonna rack up a bill, right, Tim? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate we got we got this um, uh, generator for the house, and I said to the guy, <laughs> I was trying to m make my point, Preston. I said, you know, for for us, for the fact that we have to come in early, and it, it is required of us to come in regardless of the weather condition. I benefit by having a generator by knowing that if we have a power failure during the night, everything will stay on. Yep, and that's just that peace of mind. Yep. But in planning for it, I said. Here's the scenario I want you to imagine. I have every air conditioner, all the microwaves running, everything in the house on at full power, go a, a half past that. Right. And so that's the parameters that they set because you, I don't really know the things I think don't draw a lot, do draw a lot. And the right. things, you know, so I have no understanding. So I wanted a really nice buffer. You remember back in the day when uh, you know fuses and stuff like yeah. that? Oh yeah, in the house. Would, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a, the the famous scene in uh, Christmas Story uh, where they. Oh Jesus uh, God! Yeah, <laughs> where, the, where the fuse is blown. Don't move. Uh, and only rarely does a uh, does like a breaker trip or something like that. It just mm -hmm. doesn't happen that often. We have anymore. one that will um, that when water rain gets on a certain out. Side oh, outlet, I have the same thing. It'll trip. It has one of those, you know, to stop you from getting electrocuted, GFI. Yeah. And then you have to just go and push the button into reset. But ha yeah. ha I've had people come out, like numerous electricians come out, and they're like, there's there's nothing we can do about it. Wow. I always get confused when that does happen. I'm like, do I push that thing or am I not <laughs> supposed to push that thing? Does the test, does that reset it or does the reset <laughs> thing cause it to flip and blah, 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 blah? Uh, push I don't know. The thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, now with like LED technology and these LED light bulbs, like it's pissing me off because I have, uh, basically two strobe lights in my house because I yes. put LED bulbs in there. I had one the other day. Yeah. I turned it off and back on and it fixed it. But yes. Yeah, it was. So the one is on a dimmer and I just don't understand why I try to put a piece of tape over the dimmer so it doesn't, it, you can't put it up all the way because when you do, it turns Case. into what you were doing. I have the exact same thing. Yeah. So on, on, we have a wraparound porch and we have these old sort of, they're, they're like, um, Turn of the century, last century lights, and they're yeah. supposed to look sort of like antiques. So they're on dimmers. When they, so I have the Xfinity system set to turn them on automatically, but it sets them on at full power. When it sets them on at full power, because yeah. it doesn't know, it's not in the software, uh, I get that it, it, you know, it flickering thing, and so I have to go over and actually... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to lower the lights for it to stay solid. Ah, yeah. Goddamn electronics. God damn. <laughs> It's electricity. Uh, hang on a second. Let me go to, um, I have uh, Tommy on the line. Yo, Tommy, you're on the air. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. I hate to bother you guys at work, but <laughs> if people enjoy this one. All right. All right. <laughs> go ahead. I, uh, I've been living in my house in South Philly since uh, 2020. I mean, tw 2000. I've been there over 20 years. My basement lights, three 100-watt bolts. She refuses to turn them off because the cat can't see. Okay. Oh my the cat? Does she not know the cats can see <laughs> in the dark? Right. I'm telling you. And she actually taped the switch over. Do not touch. Oh, my God. Tommy, how long have you been having this argument? Uh, <laughs> he gave up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A long time ago. She she does not realize. Uh, put, listen, put I don't, on a nature documentary well. about cats. <laughs> I don't. I don't blame her. I. I don't keep it on all the time, Tommy. But uh, when my cats eat, like in the morning when I'm leaving the house and it's dark, I leave the island lights on so they can see while they eat. <laughs> I don't want the. You wouldn't want to eat in the dark, would you, Nick? I was laughing at something else. Do you, yell at me. Do you leave I, out uh, bibs so that they? <laughs> no, listen. Who wants to sit in the dark and eat? Well, maybe the cats do. Tommy, maybe knock it down to sixty watt bulbs. Yeah. yeah the, funny thing, the funny thing is, I don't know what's more crazy, her. 
Oh, the bull's list and this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Well, you want them that bright because sometimes after the cats like to read. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> they need plenty of light. All right, thanks, Tommy. Appreciate I do that. have, like, uh, I do like to keep a couple of lights on in the house all night long. Uh, the TV is usually what illuminates my bedroom, but I like to leave the light on over the kitchen table i i just it, it always was that way when i was growing just up just something mm. do you have night lights throughout the house no well kind of okay I, I have this one night light i don't even know why we even have it plugged in because it's for the ring doorbell that we don't have hooked up <laughs> uh, case, but it provides a light does the light from the tv also help you sleep yeah so i not have me uh in yeah, the I'd be distracted okay and but not you yeah I, 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 for some reason case i find that light it, I, I, it has to be off in the room. Now, a funny thing, and I know that you're good with the, the TV light, lights on um, buttons or things that might be illuminated can sometimes be problematic, uh, you know, uh, or, or I can, uh, not problematic, I can leave those on and that's not a problem. Well, that'll drive other people crazy or the glow of my uh, phone next to me. But the TV, for some reason. Yeah, I like just, that yeah, light. Yeah. Mm. All right, hang on. Uh, Jack has some suggestions. He's an electrician as far as the LED lights go. Jack, you're on the air, buddy. Hey, guys. How you doing? Great, man. All right, so you heard what we were talking about with, the, like, the flickering LEDs, right? Yep. Do um, tell. A lot of the LED lights they sell, they're marked dimmable and not dimmable. If you put one in a circuit that's got a dimmer, it's going to turn into a Pink Floyd strobe light. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. Okay. And I think that's the situation on our wraparound porch. Yes. And GFIs outside are notorious for tripping. There's no hazard if you push the reset button. Okay. Usually what happens is years ago they would put a cover on there that would turn vertically or horizontally. They make a new cover now that's called a bubble cover that actually has a big plastic dome over it that protects a lot more to the receptacle. Years ago, they would put this little half-assed cover in there, and water would get in because of the way the receptacle faces up and down. They would put the cheap covers on there, and water would get in there, and it gets in, and the GFI starts tripping a lot more than it's supposed to. Most of the time, it happens during Christmas time when people plug in like a uh, an extension cord outside, and they don't put it into a receptacle that's got the proper cover on it. Right. Yeah, the, the cord gets wet, and the cord's meant to be plugged into a GFI. Well, if there's a nick in the cord or you have a bad set of Christmas lights, the GFI's doing its job, and it's sensing that there's something wrong, and it habitually trips. That's why, okay. you know, when you run an extension cord outside for Christmas lights, I recommend you use a three-prong extension cord. You don't use them cheap ones that they sell at Walmart that okay. are only two-prongs because without the ground, the GFI starts to sense there's something wrong. Okay. Question about that. So there's a there's a reset button and, a, and I think a test button, right? Yeah. What does the so test What does the test do? What you're supposed to do when you put in a GFI, it says right on there. You're supposed to test these GFIs once a month. Okay. They get a memory to them, and if you don't test them, all you got to do is hit test. You put the test button, and either a little light will come on to tell you that you've tripped it. And then you hit the reset button. You got to keep the memory on it going. If it if it's not been reset and tested, it gets stale, and then something happens, and it just won't reset again. Ah. So on on some of my there's a, the one in the basement ah. has a little green light on it. Um, yeah, usually the green light tells you you're good. Okay, it's still working correctly. Most of the ones now, if a little red light comes on, it tells you that there's something wrong with the GFI, and if you try to Reset it and nothing happens. One of two things. It's either a bad GFI or the wiring in the back has come loose because most of the time you either have a regular re breaker downstairs or you have a GFI circuit breaker downstairs and a regular receptacle outside. Hmm. When, we, when we do outside lighting, I put a regular breaker downstairs and I put a GFI wherever it's going to be outside. This way, if something happens, you're not guessing which circuit breaker if the panel's not marked. Yeah, that's a friggin' nightmare. Yep. It is. You know, I've been doing this for 40 years now, and if, you know, every Christmas time I get customers that call me, I want to run Christmas lights, and they plug it into, <laughs> like, a lamppost that's got a receptacle in it. Well, you know, and then they get they get a little tingle when they go out there and try to work with it. <laughs> a little tingle. Yeah. Yep. That's and why they, they, they have to have that. That's why around any where there's a pool or any water, 
you've got to have that 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 ability for the electricity to kill, right? In case there's a uh, an issue, exactly. not not kill you, kill the electricity. Yeah, that's the reason why it's called GFI, ground fault circuit interrupter. What it does, it senses a difference between the hot, the ground, and the neutral. And if any one of those three things start acting weird, it's meant to trip out. And they're more of a nuisance call than a major problem. But if they're not dealt with in a time fashion, we just did a job last week that a customer had lampposts outside and Apparently, whoever did the wiring, they nicked the wiring and they taped over it. Well, every time the timer would come on, it would trip the circuit. Well, we dug up the lawn, and lo and behold, somebody who did it originally. Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> 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 no, that, yeah, I got you. It, it's rife with problems. No, but yeah, mm. that's why you go to an experienced electrician when you're doing yep. that sort of stuff. All right, Jack, thank you, buddy. We appreciate the help, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, see thank ya. you. I get it. All right, so yeah, it might be might be your LED light is a, uh, but you said yours is dimmable, right? Um, uh, the one is dimmable, the other one is not. Okay. So, and I'm I'm fairly certain that I bought dimmable. Yeah. Um, for the dimmable light, but I, I'm I'm like over it anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, right. You're just used to it. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, I thought that was interesting. I yeah. I would you know there there are some things that you just. Leave we on, leave on all the time. Yeah. I didn't think, and there were a lot of ceiling fan people, Nick, who were just yeah. like never yeah. one ever, test after another, yeah. ever turn it off. It yeah. seems to be the number one item that's left on in homes: the ceiling fan. The people that move into the house, the fan fan was on when they moved there, and they just never bother turning and it off. Number two, rock polishing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wow. getting into um, ceiling fan turning on like season. It's, it's oh, it's, it's good season. I, I love it. Hey, I love my, it. My my season never stops. Yeah, uh, every uh, uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, I use my ceiling fan in my year bedroom. Round. Yeah, year round, but I don't leave it on all the time. I turn it on and off. So I I leave it on low because the cats love to sleep on my bed and I okay. like to just keep yeah. yeah. Um, so speaking of fans, I think I need to head back to Costco. I was at Costco on Saturday to pick up a Wazoo fan. Are you guys familiar with the Wazoo? I'm not familiar. Or, with no, 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 no. Wuzu. Wuzu? Yeah, W O O Z O O. Okay. Not a, not a dad okay, joke. Right. Not a dad joke. Um, I know uh, Vornados or what I. Oh, I like purchased. a tornado. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Wuzu is uh, apparently like all the dorm uh, rage these I days. See. Uh-huh. And so I got one for my daughter because uh, she's going away to college next year. And uh, I'm like, I think I probably need to get one for the other kids as well. I mean, it's like a, a, a big deal. Like I had mentioned it. I was at my son's rugby match yesterday. Okay. And one of the moms was like, oh, the Wuzu? And then the <laughs> other mom who has twin it's sons. It's huge. They actually, it's, it's funny you mentioned because they were doing a news feature on it this morning, oh, Case. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, uh, about, yes, about the Wuzu. About what, it. What, it, why is it different than any other I, fan? I think because it's a powerful fan, but it's compact and they're fairly inexpensive. Compare that because I love the Dyson. Yeah. The they're Dyson expensive. fan. It's $400. But, well, yes, Case, it's not a fan. It's an air multiplier. Yes, yeah, right? so that's a pompous way of referring to it. But I do love it, Kath. What I was told is that it kind of has. It's not an air conditioner, but it has air conditioner qualities. So for a dorm room like uh, that, you're not allowed to have window units in. Uh, this is the, like the next best thing. It helps blow <laughs> some air up your wuzu. Yeah. Uh, Nick pulled them up, and they're only like. 40, 50 bucks. And at a Costco, they're twenty seven ninety nine. Ooh, Mother effort. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. Uh huh. Okay. And so they had those, but they didn't have ice tea mix. <laughs> Dude, I Between you and over. Kathy walking out and getting upset at Steve fighting seltzer. Mix. I walked all over that. I, I mean, I doubled back. I walked over the entire thing uh, of Costco, like the floor. Uh, I, for. All right, so remember that one scene? Pictures, he went to Costco <laughs> to get a wuzu and <laughs> couldn't find seltzer water. Remember the scene in The Boys where Homelander was just running yes. a grid all over the world? That's what was, that was That's me how precise, yes. in Costco on Saturday. And But by the way, you know, no, I don't want to go into my own personal help, so we'll just <laughs> pass. But yes, I, I, uh, I feel your pain. Hang on, I'm not familiar with iced tea mix. Okay, so I we... I was just uh, using uh, tea bags. Yeah, so we... Um, we are a Crystal Light family or yes. a Signature Select family, and the Costco has uh, lemon iced tea and lemonade. So you take one little packet of each, and you make little your little Arnie Parmy. Little Arnie Parmy, yeah. Um, Arnie Parmy, yeah. It's from the the other guys. Uh, oh, I didn't know Arnie that. Arnie Parmy's. <laughs> okay. The guy comes over the whole tray. Arnold Palmer's. Arnie okay. Parmy's. It is a hard name to say, Arnold. 
Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. I have to pause right in the middle Arnold of it because there's so many L's and R's in there. You want a bit of sacrilege here? <laughs> I don't like Arnold Palmer's. No, what? Really? You don't like them? What about wow. tea cooler? What's that? Tea cooler? I don't like lemonade in my iced tea. Oh, I do not man. like it. I like love, lemonade. Love it. I like love iced tea, but Arnold I don't Palmer's. like I don't like Arnie Palmer's. We oh. can make Arnold Palmer's right now. Wawa gave us iced tea and lemonade. What did yeah. they? We can mix them together if you'd like. Who's for a little, who wants an Arnie Palmer? <laughs> Arnie Palmer. <laughs> if you add a little vodka, it's a John Daly. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yep. 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 Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> You're all what over is the, that. What is the uh, the um, Shirley Temple and the Judy Garland. What's the R. Bud Dwyer? <laughs> okay. What's oh, oh man. dude. That's uh, tomato juice. Yeah. Hold um, on. What's the Judy Garland? Is that just alcohol uh, added uh, to the yeah. Shirley Temple? Yeah. Shirley Temple with vodka yeah. or rum? Or, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I, I I heard those referred to as dirty Shirley's. Dirty Shirley. Oh, okay. Dirty Shirley. Yeah. 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 But I like the Judy Garland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, dude, it's lemonade. That's so <laughs> bad, wrong. The John Daly's wrong too. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> didn't he embrace it? I think so. John's just like, yeah, you want to name a drink after me? I'll take it. <laughs> totally. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. What other hardcore alcoholics could we <laughs> right. name some drinks yeah. after? The F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> People who died from alcohol poisoning. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I could make a, uh, uh, we have the iced tea and the lemonade right here. The Larney Parmy. See, now here's where I would stop, though. This is lemon iced tea. That's fine. Mm. Uh, uh, no. What? Not for no. me. Wait. And lemonade? No, they're that's, that's enough lemon. Hold on. Lemon icy. This is just their regular traditional sweetened iced tea. Uh, Wait with, a with second. lemon. It was lemon. It already has you would take Wait, I'm just saying I don't there is I don't think there is another one. It's lemon flavor, it's it, not lemonade. Yeah, it's yeah I know. I think you're right on this. You have to have straight up unlemoned it, iced tea. No, it is. And com oh, it is? I think, I'm no, just telling not. you, I think, yeah, I think that's their Can I see? That's iced their, tea. It's their, that's I know their it standard. is, but it's got lemon flavor in it, Kathy. Okay. There's a goddamn picture of a lemon on here, and it oh, says, shut up, woman. lemon. <laughs> right, I'm just telling you, you're wrong. <laughs> Yeah. I, there are sometimes yeah. I want to walk over there and I want to punch you in the face. Well, because you don't Preston? listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to kiss you. No one's going to stop you. <laughs> you know, if we had an HR department, they would be all over yeah. you, Preston, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I and hear we do. The, uh, I fanatic. actually hear we have a HR department. I don't yeah, think you're really. Where are yeah. they? Yeah. They don't, they don't really work. <laughs> well, get them down here now because I got a problem. Um, <laughs> so if, uh, let me just clarify, is the best... Arnold Palmer, uh, straight iced tea, unsweetened with lemonade. I, that's why I prefer it. Gotcha. Because I think uh, if you take sweetened iced tea and add lemonade to it, you're overdoing the sugar. I agree with yeah. you. So to me, when I've had them and I've mildly enjoyed them, it's been unsweetened iced tea with the lemonade, the lemonade providing yes. the sweetness to the drink. I think we all, all agree that you're all wrong, that everything needs to be sweetened. <laughs> I think... You like I, all the sweet? Yeah. Extra so, sweet. So... Do you ever, I love my iced tea, and I love Southern style iced tea, which is extra sweet. Sweet yeah. tea. Yeah. When you sweet buy tea. the uh, the tea mix, Casey, is is that sweetened? Yes. Oh right. yeah. So, so I like um, the sugar in the mix. Yeah. So I've been drinking the peach tea because that's all because for some reason I that love uh, peach tea. yeah it's good stuff. I want to kiss you. Oh, <laughs> you want to kiss me? <laughs> you want to kiss me? But the Costco has the big bags of these little of. Uh, Big bags of these little things. <laughs> okay, you can have big bags of little things. Yeah, you actually, yeah. 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 yeah There's yeah, nothing right. wrong with having big yep. bags of little things. I, I totally. It's I much know. harder to have a little bag of a big thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and then what was I, the. Uh, I'm sorry, Casey. Go ahead. No, you go for it. What was a uh, uh, listener? And then I had. A, <laughs> <laughs> what was the Bloody Murray? The Bloody Murray. Bloody Remember Murray. we talked about that on the show, and it was like it was a, somebody flubbed. It's probably me. And, 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 and <laughs> we, some, we created the Bloody Murray, right? Yeah. I th and, yeah. But did we ever actually create? I it? think we did. What was in it? Yeah, I don't remember. Blood. I'm sure people texted in with with ideas of what would make an ideal Bloody Murray. <laughs> <laughs> we should have those at Keenan's this year. Bloody Murray. If, 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 if Marissa's a champ at, at, uh, at, at your down. leisure, Marissa, yeah. if you can tr track back. What is the, uh, um, Matt Cord's, it was the Bloody, Bloody Caesar. Caesar. Oh, Caesar. Yeah. I don't yeah. like those. Uh, uh, Matt Cord's father used Clemato to be. Clemato juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Not a fan. Uh-uh. And then you have the Virgin Mary. Yeah. Right. Which is no vodka. Or, or the major of Orange juice. I mean, uh, Bloody Mary. Yeah. <laughs> tomato juice. <laughs> What's that, Nick? The matriarch of Catholicism also. I mean, yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's also... Oh, you, the drink. You can get a virgin right. Mary. I like it. It's orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you drinking there, Jesus? OJ? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Hang on. Marissa is holding up her hand and sending something ah. over. The origin of Bloody Murray? Oh. My God. Or do you want to hear, it? listen to a rock tumbler for a little bit? Uh, oh. <laughs> let's, hear, let's hear a rock polisher. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> 
green light on all the time. Like that white noise. Is that at all what that was sent over, Marissa? Oh. It's on its way. It, it hasn't oh. come over yet. Okay. Uh, do you want to listen to Barney in Spanish? Yes. What are we doing? I don't know. <laughs> it sounds Here we go. You want a Bloody Mary? Yeah. All right. Here there we go. go. Bloody Mary, but with a twist in line with their brand. It comes topped with a lobster claw and one of their famous Cheddar Bay biscuits. Wow. <laughs> and it does look quite yummy. Um, so it's made from Tito's Vodka, Marissa's favorite. Uh, and Bloody Mary mix is apparently is custom made by Red Lobster. The glass is then garnished with an entire lobster claw. Lobster craw. Craw. <laughs> Uh, one shrimp, an olive, a lime, a cheddar bay biscuit, and spicy seasoning on the rim of the glass as well. I'm slightly, my mouth is watering. Yeah, really? <laughs> that's, so that's, that's working it for you, huh? Oh, man, a good bloody Murray. Mary, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Murray. You and the Jewish thing. Jesus, man. Listen, oh, can I have a bloody Murray and some of those Jewy candies? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Somebody say Jewy candy earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we should make a bloody Murray. We should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cream soda, gavilta fish. It's a bloody Murray. <laughs> Manny Shevitz. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Do they make like a raspberry Manischewitz? Manischewitz. I've only seen what this in your app with your Jewy candy. I want to try a bloody Murray. A bloody Murray. <laughs> Jewy Bartenders. instead of Chewy candy. Come up with a bloody mind. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> oh, oh, my. my. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wanted a bloody Murray. <laughs> <laughs> That was, there should be a Bloody Murray. That was January 9th, 2020. Wow. All right. That's, Seems like uh, four years ago. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Man. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, we need to take a break uh, because about an hour from now, I want to make sure we stay on time yes. for uh, the... Uh, cash contest, good money it. So we will get to that in a little bit. And just a reminder that uh, tomorrow is Wawa Day. Yes. And they brought by some stuff for us. And on Wawa Day, they're doing all kinds of special stuff. First of all, there's going to be uh, free admission to the National Constitution Center from uh, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Wawa. And they have a Wawa history exhibit. Wawa. And they're going to be offering up some free food, I believe, at the Wawa Community Care Vehicle. And uh, also on Wawa Day, every store will recognize one customer day brightener to capture the special relationship between associates and customers and how those connections brighten days. And day brighteners will be presented with a sash, a vintage mug, and a week's supply of free coffee. Should so th one. that might be you. You yeah. never know. It might be Steve. We'll I have to so. see. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. Come back in just a moment. And uh, don't forget, yes, a good money it. Coming up in a little less than an hour now. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Three three WMMR. I'm going to publicly apologize I for saying say that. that I wanted to punch Kathy in the face. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. You just that. don't listen. That's the problem. Oh wow. You all don't. Right. I was just trying to. I thought you. I was trying to explain to you that that's all Wawa has. Uh -huh. I didn't know you were talking about a whole different iced tea. I wasn't. Well, is it I possible? Was, I was just saying that you both didn't I don't understand want to, each other. I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> Preston, how does I it apologize. feel when, when Kathy tries I, to reach out to you? I was being nice. And and Kathy, when Preston seems to put up walls, how does that make you feel? <laughs> oh God! But neither of you listen. You both misunderstood a whole story that we're about to tell as well. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. It was the way it was framed, and, and I, I think also it the, was not the, the way it was framed. Yeah, yeah. When you said the way you said it, 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 it I said it was an alternate to a senior prank. Mm. You know, um, that's a high school. Do thing. you ever remember meeting David Faustino? <laughs> he was never here. There was an episode of Conan recently on his podcast where he had a therapist come in, and uh, it was highly entertaining to me. I don't know if it would be entertaining to our listening audience, but I think it could be beneficial to all five of us. Uh, <laughs> We're way over. I think I said that to session. Chuck. I was like, yeah. we need a show therapist, by the way. <laughs> could, would that? How would that play out on the radio? If we Ooh. had, would, would we be able to have a therapy session? It might on be air? the last show that we ever did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had one. We had one over yogurt. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, Robert right. Irvine? Robert Irvine. Yeah, that was his case. Yeah, no. a licensed Robert, therapist. Celebrity chefs are not therapists. Yeah. yeah. No, an <laughs> actual <laughs> no. therapist. There was a morning show that we know of, right, that had to have a therapist. 
Really? What, mm, was, the, what was the name of the show? And what is it people was... we personally know? Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? I believe that's what I heard, and I'm looking at the person that I think told me, but she's not looking at me. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Lisa, Sorry. come here and say on air who it was. Yeah. Well, okay, maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't her. It wasn't her. She doesn't, okay. she doesn't know what I'm talking about. Marissa's mind is elsewhere. Today's her one-year anniversary, hey! by the way. Yeah! Her wedding anniversary. Oh. Yeah, she, she and Marissa got married at the uh, Punk Rock uh, Museum one year ago today. They eloped. What's the one year? Oh, like, when, the, gift like the gift? Yeah. I don't know. For my she, she <laughs> Marissa just looked just like, how the hell? I don't I know. Never, I never knew. I never kept track of those either. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I, know I, neither did I. Is one year the anniversary in which you take out your piece of wedding cake that you're supposed to have oh, frozen? Oh, yes. You're supposed mm -hmm. to eat the cake, yeah. That's yep. the one year, yeah, yeah, I believe so. But then there are things like, you know, there's a silver anniversary and, yeah. and uranium gold and paper and, you know, yeah. all that stuff. Nick is pulling up a list right now. Sheet rock. It's paper and clocks. I oh, really? Paper, paper and clocks. what? Clocks. Clocks? What did you hear? <laughs> clocks? <laughs> no. Uh, paper the and... The modern gift is clocks. So it was paper. Paper and clocks. The traditional gift was paper. The modern gift is clocks. Look, we got you paper. Yeah, like Dude. what would be a good paper... What? Gift. Like a book or something like that. Oh, you know? Maybe like okay. a keepsake Books. anniversary yeah. book, a journal of some so sort. A Books. Books. <laughs> Sentimental wall, wall art. Ah. You know, an adventure challenge journal. <laughs> those yeah. types of things. Man, you're just thinking of all that yep. stuff. You are such a good gift giver. What about a Mad Libs book? <laughs> Smart. So, um, Marissa, for clocks, I sent you that clock oh. a little while back uh, that I think would be great for you. You guys remember the Stussy S? It was like when we were in high yes, school. Yes, of course. So they have a clock. You can draw it. You can draw it. Totally. Yeah. I mean, essentially, like each number is that, that that line in the Stussy clock. That would be a good clock gift. That would match the vibe of my wedding. It would. 100%. Yeah. Very cool. What, what's the... The Stussy S. All right. okay. so Stussy and the it's, Banshees. It's, you draw three lines like that, okay. and then you draw three lines like that, yeah. and then connect you connect everything. that line like that, and then you collect it, and then so then it's an S. That's Hold an, it up. And, Hold it up. Yeah, no, no, but they, but they turned that into the clock. Uh, um, I see what you're it's saying. It's a cool little design. Yeah, what what does the Stussy mean? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm it's clueless. a brand. Yeah, it, it's a brand. Yeah, it was okay, a brand, thank you. and it was no a idea. big time doodle for us when we were in high school. This okay, you would draw these. And is all it the a time. punk rock thing? Yeah, it's got that like kind of sort of uh, I, punk rock um, uh, alt vibe, vibe okay. to it. Yeah. Okay, okay. gotcha. <laughs> My thing would be uh, cave art. That was what yeah. I was oh, reading yeah. on. Books, books. <laughs> <laughs> I love that reaction. <laughs> okay, uh, it's time to. Um, Go totally Presbo. Yeah. Totally Presbo. Hi, Presbo. Yeah. All right. Uh, some things I saw. And this is quite interesting. Uh, how do you guys pronounce uh, VRBO, the, the website? Vibro? Ver Verbo? Verbo. 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 Yeah. I just say VRBO. Verbo is sharing the recommendations for when to book uh, vacation homes for Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and Labor Day. So what is the distinction of Verbo or Verbro or Verbro uh, as opposed to, say, any of the other... Uh, vacation so rentals yeah. by it's owner. The same thing. Yeah, yeah. Different so companies. It's the same thing, just different company. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, that's what it stands for. Vacation rentals by owner. Okay. Uh, I think so. According to data from Verbo, private vacation rentals tend to book up faster than hotels and other kinds of accommodations and waiting to make the reservation when trying to find out you can't rent a home, uh, where and when you want it will ruin your getaway. So to make sure that doesn't happen to you, the vacation rental site recommends these days or this time frame for you to book. To start okay. booking for your yes. summer travel plans? So Memorial Day is, if you're planning your summer vacation. Planning your summer vacation. <laughs> May 27th is Memorial Day this year, and travelers who want to book vacation home for Memorial Day weekend should do so by today. Huh. Okay. So to remember this in, in the future. Tax day, by then you need to have your Memorial Day weekend rental home ready to go. If you want to get Planning a rent your summer vacation. If you <laughs> if you want to get a rental home for Fourth of July, uh, Verbo advises booking by May seventeenth. Hmm. And if you're hoping to spend Labor Day weekend in a home away from home, Verbo recommends booking by July twenty second at the latest. That's, These are the latest. Those late. seems those seem very late. All Agreed. of those dates. Agreed. I think yeah. You know, a lot of times people will book their vacation like at the end of their vacation. You know, like they'll book for next year if they wow. find a place that they really like. And then I also think that, I mean for us like you know the Jersey Shore is where we go right. Um, January I, like if you want the pick of the litter. 
right? Yeah. It, the, the longer you wait, the the you know less choices you have out there. Doesn't this seem uh, this seems like a short amount of time if you're looking to right? If you're, yeah. working, I mean, that yes. just seems a, sh a this is that this seems is the, like a risky wait. Well, this is the, this is the last. Oh, the last. You should book by and last means the the last, the final. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm doing a verbo for the first time this summer. Um, and we're, we're at the Pacific Northwest, uh, ah. right, right near Mount Rainier, and um, to Preston's point, like. We got a place maybe a month ago, six weeks ago, something like that, and they were already really selling out. So, wow. and, and it's a popular destination, um, but uh, I'm super psyched with the place that we rented. It's really cool. It's very modern, um, and I, I, it'll, I'm just really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I've not entertained the idea of a rental home before. I yeah. really should do that. I'll send you the link to this one as an example and, and see if it uh, whets your appetite at all. I don't. It's a cool spot. I, it, it has I no fascination for me. The, the, I have two options. I will do a, a fine hotel or a detached garage. Well, you, uh. you mean to stay in a rental home or own yeah. one? Uh, no, no, to stay for in a rental home. Because it's, it's not easy to, to run them. And, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Especially yeah, I mean, if you're doing it on your own. Yeah, we we bought you know a shore house and and for a flicker of a second we were like rent it out. No, you, no. most people hire someone to manage if you have the wherewithal financially, but it is a taxing thing to do. Yeah, I mean and, and it, listen, you you're down there all the time. Yeah, this place uh, has two bedrooms, two bath, uh, fireplace, hot tub. Kitchen, the whole nine. And, um, you know, for, I understand the appeal in a hotel, certainly. But, like, uh, for a few days, I, th um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I just, I'm, uh, the, uh, the unknown is what. Monsters. No, not uh, that unknown. Okay. Like. <laughs> well, you don't know. Like, what, are you going to arrive and it is, it's crappy yeah. or it doesn't yes. look like it's. It, yes. Yeah, and I know that there are ways to cut corners and make places look nice and other. But I guess reviews are reviews, reviews. That's well, what you got they've done a really good job now, both of them, Airbnb. I and just want to make sure you have cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there, there are reviews and you can't review a place unless you've stayed there and you can't see their review of you. So the owner reviews the, the person that stays as well because you get ratings uh, as a, you know, as a renter or vacationer. So um, th they do a really good job with that. But yes, there are. So the first time I ever did an Airbnb, um, I was not familiar really with how it all worked and I didn't even really look at reviews, but the pictures looked great. The place was amazing. We were like, this is perfect. Took the whole family there, brothers, kids, babies, everything. It was disgusting. Oh, really? It was oh, a dump. Man. We, really? le we left early and the guy who, is, and they were, this house was one that was under like a management company, right? Okay. So I wasn't talking to the owner. I was talking right. to whoever the manager was that runs a number, a number of properties. And he was so nice, very helpful and whatever we needed. But like, there was nothing that could be done. It was just, it was a dump and it was gross. And if you need cigarettes, let me know. <laughs> we ended up leaving early. Wow. And that ruins, that ruins it. Yeah, that's honestly that's scrappy. why I yeah. if every you want to make your you know you you work and you you want to get get your time off and and have the money mean something that you're going to spend and you're going to get a return on it and that's why I think and you, you subscribe to this notion as well I, th I think we all do at some level that where you're staying whether it be a hotel or it's got to be great because if where you end up for rain or whatever it puts yeah. it, uh, a hamper on what you're doing, at least you'll have that. You'll I have mean, something there, you can enjoy. There could be cockroaches on the pillow. Yes. There could be any number yeah, there of... Could be a, there could be a hooker right across the street. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have... Or uh, guys in the, in, the, in the parking lot playing their music really loud. Everything <laughs> from here on out is a bonus. That's right. I've stayed at the lowest. <laughs> You've hit the rock yeah. bottom. Uh -huh. I, I, yeah. I did it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> and so, therefore, I everything else is going to be something to look forward to in my life. It's like Steve Martin describing this story. I don't care what kind of torture. I don't care what what you do to me because I've heard him tell me a story. Yeah. Let me go to Chris. Hi, Chris. You're on the air, buddy. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Casey. Uh, what's a cat's favorite TV show? What's a cat's favorite TV show? Casey? I don't know. What is it? Call and order. Call and order. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to call. I just got out of that traffic jam on Northeast Extension. It was terrible. Oh. I just wanted to call and say, I, me and my family went down to Disney World. Uh, like five years ago, and we rented a, a five-bedroom, five-bath house in Kissimmee, which is right near Orlando, and it was actually a lot cheaper than staying at the at the sports resort. At yeah, Disney Chris, may, may I ask, ballpark, what 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 did you pay for that? 
it was like five years ago. I think it was like three hundred dollars a night, and it was uh, in November, which is like the cheaper time to go to. Yeah, Orlando. that's phenomenal. Yeah, Chris, yeah. Chris, we've done that twice, man. And not only that, but like they have like two master bed uh, bedrooms, right? Um, they have yeah, themed yeah, rooms, yeah, like, like they had, they had like a princess room, and then they had a have room a with like with cars. Uh, we had our own pool at our house, and then the community that we were in had a pool there as well. I mean, it's, the only problem is it's at the end of the night, you got to get in your car and then drive home, which, you know, ultimately is not that big of a deal, right? I mean, there are certain perks. No, it wasn't. Yeah, there's certain we perks. We might have actually stayed in the same community because it sounds a lot like we we had. Like, that. the the community we were in had its own pool, had its own, like, uh, slide water park kind of thing in there. Wow. Had a bar by the pool. That's pretty cool. It was really nice. Yeah. It was, I remember it was on King Arthur Road. I don't know how that sticks in my mind, but I oh, remember. Because it's Camelot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, bud. We'll see you. All right. Yeah, that's definitely an option. Yeah. That's uh, outside of the, the, the hotel. But, I mean, yeah, there are certain amenities that are attractive about hotels, too, but they are expensive. Oh, my gosh. But, like, listen, when you're going to <sighs> Disney and you're spending all of that money and then you can, like, make sandwiches and, you know, you have a full-on kitchen and to do all them and sell them. Sell I didn't even sandwiches? think about that, Steve. <laughs> Sir, your, the sandwich stand you have outside your room is not hotel policy. <laughs> Just selling sandwiches. <laughs> All right, we're going to go somewhere else. Totally Hi, Presbo. Yeah. Totally Presbo. Uh, Steve sent this to me. This was great. Uh, Houston Rockets uh, center, uh, Bobin uh, Marjanovic, uh, purposely missed a free throw while his team was up big to send LA uh, to send the LA Clippers fans home with free chicken. Oh, really? <laughs> in the last game of the regular season. So yes. he did breaking for chicken just for those guys. Breaking for that's, that's, that's a promotion. Yeah, and he was an away guy. He, he wasn't yes, even the yeah. home crowd. He, yeah. you know, Boban's awesome. I love I that guy. Love, yes. Well, he used to play for them, right? He, did, he played for the Sixers, and uh, he also used to play for the Clippers too. Yep. But he's like a really likable, um, affable kind of a guy. He's yeah. also he's the one who's in uh, Parabellum, right, John Wick? Yes. Yeah. So the Rockets were up 105-97. And uh, Marjanovic stepped up to the line, missed his first free throw. That got the Clippers fans on their feet. <laughs> and as a second missed free throw would have meant free chicken as part of the promotion, he stepped up a former Clipper, like Nick said. He recognized he was uh, that um, what was going on, and he began to hype up the crowd. He was, like, pointing at himself and, <laughs> and kind of gesturing that he might do this. And he throws it up, and it hits off the side of the of the uh, the rim. <laughs> and he puts his hand up in the air afterwards, like, I did that for you. <laughs> that is cool. Will and the be, NBA have anything to say about it? I don't know. I mean, because apparently the game meant nothing for them. They're out of contention yep. altogether, yeah. and they were winning. They, were up, they ended up winning the game, 116-105. They were way ahead. Yeah, so I don't even like they were probably under uh, underdogs. So yeah. winning it, um, by any more points probably didn't matter because they were and already the, underdogs. The playoffs were set too. Like yep. Houston wasn't going to make the playoffs, so yeah, I don't think it matters. <clears throat> How excited do you guys get when there is a food promotion? Unreasonably excited, at a, at a especially event, because right? yes. especially because I never actually go and <laughs> get the right, free food the next yes. day. I yeah. never do. But it's I, still... I've never been, and I, I think it'd be pretty cool, right? It's yeah. so much fun, Steve. It's a great promotion for whatever company is, right. is paying for that advertising because the fans go nuts for it, and you uh, and that, you know inevitably you're saving ninety nine cents on a frosty right. or whatever the next day. But it's just a, the fact that just the maybe idea. they're going to miss a free throw and you're going to get something for free the next day. Yeah, I've been at Flyers games. They've had some. They did a promotion a few years ago that was a food thing, and everybody around <laughs> us was all fired up because I forgot what the scenario was. If they needed three goals or whatever it may be, and yes, uh, or maybe there's a hat trick. No, I or think something. it was. I think if you got if the Flyers scored four goals. You maybe get like yeah. a free chicken sandwich right. or yeah. something like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know what the yes. Eagles did last year? They started off ten and one, and then they completely collapsed, and then got ousted into the playoffs, and then they rewarded the fans by jacking up the tickets <laughs> on the. Uh, uh, on, that's, uh, that's a on, cool promotion. Yeah, yeah, that's like, hey, a cool promotion. Yeah. Here we go, and we're also going to take away one home game and put it in Brazil. <laughs> here you go, fans. Here you go, fans. Yay! <laughs> go we team. love yeah. you. We love you so much. You're a little so uh, sports salty today. A little today. salty today, yeah. yes. Yep. All right. Well, we'll move on to another sports thing. How about a <laughs> totally present? How about maybe a, a, a milkshake? <laughs> Would that make I'll, I'll take an Arnold Palmer. Arnie okay. Palmer. Arnie Palmer. Hi, Presbo. All right. Totally Presbo. Uh, Nike has revealed the uniforms they've designed for Team USA's track and field athletes for the Paris Games, and uh, they're raising some eyebrows. Uh, at a Nike Air event on, in Paris on Thursday, the company unveiled the men's and women's designs 
Uh, but it's only the women's that are being called out for being a bit skimpy. Are they assless? They're not assless. Uh, both uniforms are made from spandex with the men's featuring uh, conservative mid-thigh length shorts and a full coverage tank top. The women's style <clears throat> one-piece outfit uh, has a skimpy high-cut bottom that has some athletes wondering if they'll be showing uh, too much when competing. And in fact, uh, Tara Davis Woodhall, a long jump hopeful, said, wait, my hoo-ha is going to be out. <laughs> Uh, she competed in the 2020 Olympics and commented on this. Uh, retired U.S. world champion runner Laura Fleshman wrote in an Instagram post, uh, professional athletes should be able to compete without uh, dedicating brain space to constant pube vigilance or, <laughs> or these mental gymnastics of having every vulnerable piece of your body on display. I so need to I, see this. I yeah. don't. And they've done this a couple of times. They did it, I think, it was with the, the volleyball. Um, well, that, they like those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those ladies like those. But outfits. there was one that they'd gone a little too far, and uh, it was like, wow, it's like just kind of find a happy medium. And it's like a weird cut. It's it, not it is even a weird like cut. a traditional cut. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? And I just don't know why the women can't wear what the men are wearing. I mean, I, that yeah. to me, like, agreed. Um, uh, aerodynamically, just, is just fine. Yeah, I mean, this is all form-fitting yes. stuff. It's as tight as you can possibly get, and these athletes are obviously in an insane shape. Oh, yeah, that cut is... That yeah, was all uncomfortable. Yeah. See my ninja boot. <clears throat> the, uh, I mean, the, the <laughs> divers and swimmers don't even have a cut like that. Yeah, right? Uh, Nike has defended their design with Janet Nickel, vice president of Apparel Innovation, telling CBS Sports uniforms uh, perform at the highest level and ensure that athletes were brought in to try the uniforms out. SNL over the weekend, Preston called the uh, the, the, the male equivalent a uh, troll nose. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what's that now? The penis is a troll nose. Troll nose. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's great. I love that. <laughs> wow. Huh. Uh, Paralympian uh, Famita Ayanbiku said, this is clearly a joke. I'm someone's mom. I can't be exposing myself in such ways. Where are the shorts? <laughs> yeah. I shorts would be fine. Yeah, shorts would be fine. Uh, somebody and somebody had posted a saying: If the labia are hanging out on a still mannequin, what do we? What's going to happen with a moving person? <laughs> so yeah, that's a strange little cut. So yeah, I'd okay. be uncomfortable. I think as an athlete. Yep. All right, let's go to something else. Hi, Presbo. Hey, yeah. Totally Presbo. So I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, Sierra Space is a company unveiled a radical new concept for on-demand cargo delivered from Earth orbit. Radical. Uh, the company aims to land critical supplies anywhere on the planet within 90 minutes of when it's requested. <laughs> That's is that insane. not crazy? That's yeah. insane. What? Sierra Space says that the concept could enable soldiers on the battlefield or in remote areas to acquire much-needed supplies on quicker time scales, as they'd be far from traditional infrastructure used to transport goods on the ground. The Ghost Orbital Delivery Platform could also aid first responders in disaster-stricken areas so, and bolster humanitarian efforts. This is on a more dramatic level, as opposed to getting a uh, you know a. Uh, um, like a, 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 a barbecue or something delivered to your house. This yeah. is more. This is more essential stuff Probably. than a waffle iron. Yeah. While several commercial launch providers like SpaceX and Rocket Lab, in addition to U.S. military, have been discussing using rockets to send cargo rapidly around the Earth, Sierra's Space Ghost concept Space Ghost. could allow payloads to land in areas without dedicated launch or landing facilities. It would be particularly useful for, uh, for smaller payloads, therefore opening up Radical new possibilities for civilian supply chains on top of military demands. And this is what it reminds me of, Steve. <laughs> and I've forgotten which Avengers movie it was in, but when he calls in Veronica. Right. Oh, yeah, when that was uh, Tony Ultron. Tony Stark. I was Ultron. Hulkbuster. Yeah. yeah. And, and it comes in from space. Yes. And, yes. And comes down. And, yes. And that's essentially Where they needed it. what they want to do. Do they see any sort of uh, civilian application of this, not, like pizzas? Not in this particular space pizza story. They did not cover space pizza. <laughs> the system would involve loading predetermined supplies such as survival kits, an inflatable boat, rations, and weaponry onto different units. These units would then be launched into orbit. 
The ghost platform could then wait up to five years in orbit before any preload supplies are called down to Earth. That's, that's a great idea. Once materials must be delivered, first a deorbit motor would slow the satellite down enough for Earth's gravity to begin pulling it towards the planet's surface. The system's thermal shield would meanwhile protect the payload from the upcoming intense heat of the entry. <laughs> it, arrives, it arrives completely incinerated. Uh, once safely within Earth's atmosphere... <laughs> I this, can't use this! This smoking thing, yeah, just lands... <laughs> what is that? Here. Yeah. Uh, once safely within Earth's atmosphere, the thermal shell will be that dis- was your livestock. discarded, and the system's soft shell, unbreakable, or, I'm sorry, umbrella like parafoil would open. A steerable rudder on the parafoil can help guide the ghost payload to within 300 feet of its targeted landing spot. Pretty amazing. Yes. Yeah. So uh, the uh, Ultron uh, comparison is pretty, uh, pretty accurate. Uh, while the ghost system can be scaled to different sizes, uh, between 550 pounds and 1,750 pounds is the sweet spot in terms of cost versus the amount of returnable payload. And speaking of cost, each unit, each unit currently costs somewhere in the tens of millions of dollars to build. That seems cost prohibitive. A little bit. Mm. You had to deliver a pizza. Uh, Sierra Space is working to bring that cost down to single-digit millions. Wow. It's, yeah. What a savings. <laughs> so. <laughs> Pretty wild concept, though, right? Yeah. It reminds me also of a War of the Worlds, the way the aliens <laughs> shot down. Their their ships were shot down. They they were shot into the ground, though. Remember, they came up later? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they buried the... They supposedly, buried the, they buried the, yeah. the, the... And then they, they shot them down through uh, yeah. lightning. Right, right. Uh, into the... Uh, could they do that? <laughs> maybe they could do that. Maybe they're working on that. <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's Hi, Presbo. Uh, so, <laughs> totally Presbo. <laughs> So, how about this? The Willy Wonka experience in Glasgow, Scotland. The legendary Willy that Wonka experience. Went viral earlier this year with the sad Oompa Loompa and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, despite the backlash and mockery, the now infamous event is returning, and this time it's going to Los Angeles. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So, is it going as sort of a knowing yes. parody of itself? That's exactly Okay. That. Yeah. Uh, so, according to the a post... Uh, By House of Illuminati LA, it says, yes, this is a real event. Get ready to step into the realm of pure imagination as the highly acclaimed (laughs) Willie's Chocolate Experience LA makes its debut in the United States. The event uh, said it's following its groundbreaking success in Glasgow. (laughs) This fantastical event promises an immersive journey into the whimsical world of Willy Wonka. The sad Oompa Loompa, Christy Patterson, who instantly became a meme, will also be participating in the event on April 28th with a, quote, exclusive absurdist Q&A and fan photo opportunity. So this is wild. The thing was a disaster. If, if you aren't familiar with it, you can find pictures of it online, but it is it was literally like folding tables, and it, it was the bare bones minimum nothing, and, and they were billing it as this wonderful immersion into Willy Wonka, yeah. and it was just laughing. It, 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 and the fact that it went so global so quickly yeah. was just amazing. I agree, because I, I thought it was mildly interesting, yeah, but yeah. some people found it Hilarious, very, yeah. very entertaining. So this is what you do. Yeah. You seize on this For opportunity. Sure, right? yeah. I mean, why not? Yes, the woman who is the sad Oompa Loompa uh, has made a fortune in Cameo. Yep, and, uh, and she knows, because, man, these things last five minutes. Right, it. And if you yeah. do not get what you can out of it right away, then you're missing <clears throat> sometimes a one and only opportunity. Uh, tickets are $44. They are non-refundable. Uh, the proceeds for the event will be donated to an unnamed mental health charity, according to the organiz- organizers. Uh, in another nod to the previous event, attendees will get a will get two complimentary jelly beans. <laughs> what? Oh, my <laughs> two God. Com- That's hilarious. And a Bloody Murray. <laughs> uh, to kickstart the sweetness, they said. All right, we probably have time for one more. Is it one more case or is that uh, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, this is the last thing. Holy Presbo. The Moorestown Library in Burlington County set out an alert Monday uh, warning that the solar eclipse glasses that they had, had distributed for the celestial event may have been counterfeit. Oh, oh man. my God. Oh. Yeah. Now, a few hours before the eclipse became viewable in the region, the library posted a message on Facebook apologizing for the apparent mistake the glasses have been purchased from Walmart.com. 
And the library said, we've recently learned that uh, though they are labeled as having been manufactured by Medical King, they may be counterfeit. Burger King. We advise <laughs> against using these and apologize profusely for the error. So, they, you know, they got it in under the wire. Yeah. But still, you know, some not everybody got that. There's still a few people wandering around in the woods. <laughs> uh, the library Where am I? shared a link uh, to a CNET article that explains how to double check the authenticity of glasses and properly test them visually. Now it's a little late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. too late. Sorry, you're blind. Yeah, that did happen um, to a few different places across the did country. Did we get any um, verifiable report of anybody going blind or being... Not blind, but I did see that... Reports were, I saw a couple of headlines that said this and read a little bit of the stories that, um, you know, visits to the doctor right. in the emergency room complaining of eye issues uh, correlated a, a tick up right, right after that. Sure. The the, the eclipse occurred. So. Has anybody hearing it like uh, car accidents? Because I know people were warning about looking out the car windows and, and through the sunroof or whatever. I was looking for them because there was a report leading into it. Yeah, that yeah. They, that they, in the last one, 2017, that there was an uptick, right. but not this time. Yeah. So I think we helped mitigate that. Yeah, so mostly us. If you got your glasses from the Morristown Library in Burlington County, just uh, be aware. You can't see anymore. And you can't yeah. see anymore. <laughs> Maybe a reason That's for why that. they're listening to the radio. All right, we got to say bye, Presbo. Bye, Presbo. Yeah, thank you. Totally Presbo. Wrapping it up for now. Uh, we we're gonna, we want to stay on time again. We've had a pretty good track record so far of getting in the uh, uh, good money it word on time. So we'll take a break. We'll come back in a second. Bizarre file stories are on the way indeed, but we'll have your chance of winning $1,000 very shortly. So stay with us. <laughs> traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Just glancing at the uh, opening page of uh, PrestonSteve.com that Nick's got up and <clears throat> I uh, need to mention I'm happy to see the return of, uh, of our Daily Rush videos, which yes. uh, or I need to start going back and, and watching because there was one from uh, last week says, does Bill Weston really dry his butt with a hair dryer? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's photoshopped me as Bill Weston, which is kind of funny that... Uh, uh, Kyle did that. And then uh, the, the most recent one is Nirvana's Chili Dogs commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so they did uh, they did Pat's Chili Dog, uh, Chili Dog commercial. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. I, I got to go make that and make sure Good I stuff. take a look. And also on PrestonSteve.com, since uh, Marissa's had her one year anniversary, uh, she and her husband Matt's uh, punk rock wedding yes. uh, gallery. Never, never before seen photos from the wedding are there now. Uh, if you would like to see that too, a peek into how, the, how that whole thing went. A wonderful thing. So PrestonandSteve.com is where you're going to find all that info. All right, a little less than a minute or so, we are going to have your chance to uh, win $1,000. Hopefully you don't mind that. But I do want to mention this as well. Our friends from Wawa are celebrating 60 years. Uh, the history of Wawa dates back to 1902 when they started delivering milk with the dairy. Uh, and then the business changed. It was uh, Graham Wood opened the first store April 16th, 1964 in Folsom, PA. And they want you to celebrate by visiting your local Wawa store today, whenever. But tomorrow is Wawa Day. And the National Constitution Center is going to have free admission from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in conjunction with this whole thing. That's terrific. And they're going to they're gonna be celebrating uh, customers at the, at the stores and stuff like that. So that's uh, tomorrow, just to give you a heads up on that. And thank you to Wawa for dropping off the little gift packages and stuff that they did today. Uh, so we do appreciate that. All right. We can now do this. Here we go. 93.3 WMMR, Philadelphia. It's time for a good money it keyword. Uh, the word is double. D-O-U-B-L-E. We're going to give you until 15 minutes after the hour to enter that. And there are three ways for you to do it. Uh, you can enter it at WMMR.com. Or you can text it to, uh, or I'm sorry, you can do it through the MMR app. Or you can text it to the special contest short code number which is 45911. One random entry will win $1,000 in this company-wide contest. Need to enter gets a call from Beasley. Make sure you answer your phone. Contest rules are available at WMMR.com, and it is sponsored by McLaughlin Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. So again, the word is double. D-O-U-B-L-E. Enter that now. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre, Bizarre Files. Brought to you this morning by Mini Melts of America. Breaking ice cream news. Get Mini Melts ice cream delivered right to your door on the Wawa app. You're just a few clicks away 
from enjoying your favorite Mini Melts flavor. Download the Wawa app today. All right. The fatal poisoning of a California resident who had ordered a Vietnamese herbal ointment for hemorrhoids online. Oh, man. Is a recent example of lead, dangerous and toxic metal showing up in imported products. So they're already dealing with hemorrhoids. Yeah, already. Already. Oh, the list in recent months has included items ranging from applesauce, ground cinnamon, and bracelets to sippy cups, water bottles, and dark chocolate. Local officials, officials issued a public health alert after a woman in Sacramento developed severe lead poisoning and died after using a hemorrhoid ointment from Vietnam called, and I'll do my best here, uh, Cow Boy Tri K Thao Dao. Uh, the California Department of Public Health tested a sample of the ointment and found it contained what it described as a highly dangerous amount of lead, or 4%, according to the country's law. Wow. Wow. Uh, the deceased woman had purchased the ointment on Facebook, and it was mailed to the U.S. by a relative in Vietnam. It was not immediately clear if people can buy the ointment directly in the U.S., but any <clears throat> consumers with the ointment should stop using it, get their blood tested for lead. Well, also, if you're putting it into that region of the body, it gets assimilated into the body much quicker. Yeah, the product is marketed... You know, talk about your ass. ...primarily through Facebook groups in Vietnamese uh, as so-called miracle treatment for hemorrhoids. Well, uh, they're not bothering her anymore. Mm -hmm. Sure. A National Tra Transportation Safety Board report says the pilot of a fatal 2022 crash had fallen from the plane mid-flight before the plane crashed, killing the passenger in Pennsylvania. Uh, it was uh, the pilot, Ronald Snyder of Berks County, reported the airplane had a rigging issue that caused the plane to, quote, kick laterally during turns. A friend piloted the plane and reported the odd yawing moment while performing turns, and the report says the pilot planned to fix the issue at another time. Oh, man! Oh. After the plane departed from Lebanon County, the report says flight tracker information indicated that several minutes after departure, the plane leveled off. Witnesses reported the plane rolled, then bucked as it, its nose dipped down initially and then picked up quickly. Witnesses reported seeing the pilot out of the airplane and one reported seeing the pilot impact then spiral off of the airplane's oh. tail. I'm going for a walk. Several witnesses reported hearing a bang from the plane that sounded more like an impact than an explosion. Witnesses observed both the pilot and the airplane descend to the ground. Ooh. Toxicology testing found medication in the pilot system, but found the medical conditions were not believed to be a factor of the accident. The pilot's seat was equipped with a lap belt and shoulder harness, which were intact but unlatched. Mm. Uh, they said, although the reason for the pilot's exit from the airplane during the flight could not be determined, his impact with the tail section of the airplane during the flight resulted in substantial damage to the tail section and a subsequent loss of control during flight from which the pilot-rated passenger would not have been able to recover. So the, by hitting the tail... Right, that was it. It took the plane Gone. out of commission. A witness at uh, Wilkes-Barre, Wyoming Valley Airport reported that Snyder had offered the passenger to fly, but the passenger was already buckled into the seat and said, nope, you fly. So, wow, that's wow. pretty messed up. Horrible, horrible. Here's another nasty one, uh, and, but with, with a weird twist to it. An American woman died after she was involved in a golf cart crash and a subsequent bar fight in Belize. All right. Jennifer Lynn Griffith was riding in the passenger seat of a golf cart, and her husband was driving in San Pedro, Belize, when they crashed into El Notre Bar on Saturday night. The incident sparked an altercation with some of the bar's employees, which escalated when one of them threw a conch shell that struck Griffith in the head. Ow! <laughs> the police commissioner said it was my understanding that prior to the brawl, the lady was on a golf cart along with her husband. It collided into the building with the golf cart, uh, during which she also may have hit her head. She had a concussion, and that it was the uh, collision that eventually led to the brawl. And during the brawl, she was also stoned with a conch shell, which caused her head injuries. Where was this? At the Masters? It was in Belize. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, Griffith was uh, taken to the hospital but refused medical care and went home, only to return the next day with head pain, and it was then that she died, man. Man, that's horrible. Yeah, it's unclear whether Griffith died because of the golf cart crash. Golf is dangerous. Or the conch shell blow. Probably and the conch shell. Probably, I'm thinking the conch shell. Uh, and then we have this story. Uh, oral surgeon Dr. Louis Bourget 
received an absolute discharge after he had guided a correctional officer through the removal of a sedated inmate's teeth. Wow. Dr. Bourget will not have a criminal record. The oral surgeon was charged with assault after he permitted a correctional officer to extract an inmate's teeth in October of 2020. The incident was recorded by another correctional officer on his phone. So the two officers from the Bishop Falls Correctional Center, uh, Ron McDonald and Ron Goodyear. Ron Ronald McDonald. McDonald. Stop yeah. it. That's not right. Uh, accompanied an inmate to the clinic. According to the agreed statement of the facts, when the patient was sedated, Bourget was explaining the procedure to the guards, and he then suggested one of the guards remove four teeth. Uh, Ronald McDonald took out the teeth. <laughs> well, good to hear. Recorded the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I guess so. Bourget said he, quote, got caught up in a teaching moment. Yes. That's what he said. I got swept away. What can I say? But regretted the decision after the procedure. The Grimace had no problem with it. Uh, in court on Tuesday, Justice Melanie Del Rizzo uh, said that there were several things to consider in delivering her decision, including the pressures of the pandemic. I want to fight you. And she wanted to fight him. <laughs> uh, Bourget can spent- he appeal the, the verdict to Mayor McCheese? Uh, Bourget. <laughs> I mean, he could. Right? Pa- pardon him. Yeah. How many teeth did they take out? Four. Oh. Yeah. One, two, three. Uh, Bourget's. Just the three of us, four of us, me and you. The financial yes. loss, his guilty plea, uh, his low risk to reoffend, and his completion of sensitivity training. Jeez. She also acknowledged the victim's psychological harm due to the incident, breaches of his bodily integrity, and that Bourget did not report the incident. Uh, but she said a criminal conviction is not in the public's interest. Bourget would uh, not have to do, do an interview following the decision. However, I can't. Following the incident. I did do it. He served sanctions <laughs> from dental boards in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, they threw a dog in there. <laughs> so uh, so I guess he's going he's gonna to have a hard time professionally, but he's not going to jail. Okay. But yeah. essentially, this guy had a tooth problem, yeah. and he's talking to security guards. He's like, well, you pull him out. Go now. ahead. And he tells him how really? to do it. Yeah. Right, I've never really done this, but sure, why not? That's what I have in the bizarre file for you this morning. And he had Ronald McDonald. Ronald right. McDonald right there. Yeah. All right, so as we take a break, you have roughly five minutes or so left to enter our cash contest keyword, which is double for the Good Mo- Money It contest. So make sure you do that now. Double, D-O-U-B-L-E. And you can do it through WMMR.com on the MMR app or you can text it to 45911. So get on that now. We'll take a break. We got less in question, trash, music, news stuff coming up. Stay with us. Going <laughs> to guitar riff. I always love that one. Running down a dream on MMR, 17 minutes after 10 o'clock. Uh, Monday morning with Preston and Steve Show. Yep, we'll get that later today. Coming up in a little while, your beginning of the... Uh, potential walking away with that prize so um but we have other things to give away uh not only today every day this week but we're going to continue with today's lesson question we'll see if you've been paying attention this morning we're going to give away a four pack of tickets for the monster energy ama super cross which is taking place saturday uh april 27th at lincoln financial field and let's go with this we talked about people leaving something on all the time. Yes. At Steve's house, what noisy item is running 24-7? 215263 WMMR. At mm. Steve's house, what noisy item is running 24-7? 215. We haven't we even had a sound effect of it. Yes, we did. 215-263 WMMR. If you know the answer, call right now. We'll do this while you're calling. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you by Philly Sports Trips. Go to phillysportstrips.com right now. You can put down a small refundable deposit to go to spring training with us next March. Yes, you can do that now. That's phillysportstrips.com. What's going on, Steve? Well, O.J. Simpson's attorney, Malcolm Laverne, stating that Simpson's estate will not be liquidated to pay off the money he owes the Browns and the Goldmans. Laverne says everyone seems to forget that O.J.'s expensive Italian shoes and gloves were ruined while he was killing them. Oh, yeah. oh my God. The new Michael Jackson biopic is uh, will have an extended running time due to the inclusion of 20 of his songs. Producer Graham King says they were able to free up a lot more screen time by eliminating half the scenes involving Jackson showing off his butthole. Okay. Oh, hey! 
You like to do that, apparently. Yeah, okay. And finally, Netflix is reportedly... <laughs> Netflix has reportedly greenlit two new projects being produced by Meghan Markle. The first project is a movie about a popular streaming platform that buys into the hype about a royal adjacent B-level actress and ends up losing loads of money. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, look at my butthole. Hey, look at my butthole. (laughs) Hey, besides that, look at my butthole. He was very proud. All right, the lesson question. Uh, what's the only item in Steve's house that runs 24-7, 215-263-WMMR? Uh, we'll go to Jennifer, see if she can get it right. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, good morning. All right, Jennifer, uh, what uh, runs 24-7 in Steve's house? The rock polisher. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, Yay. rock polisher. <laughs> Hang on, Jennifer. Bye-bye, Jenny. We're going to set you up with a four-pack of tickets for the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Saturday, April 27th, Lincoln Financial Field. Uh, experience the intense action of the world's most demanding sport live and in person. You can visit supercrosslive.com for more information. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Brought to you by Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds since 1987. You can get free seeding every year, so call 800-FREE-SEED-NOW. John Bon Jovi has said that he would be done with music if his singing continues to struggle following a vocal injury. Uh, He spent nearly two years recovering from vocal cord surgery, recently made a comeback performing at the Music Cares Gala in Los Angeles in February. Uh, But he said uh, in an interview, this is the first time I'm saying this. He said, if the singing is not great, I can't be the guy I once was. If I can't be the guy I once was, then I am done and I'm good with that. Uh, The Disney Plus documentary series, Thank You, Good Night, the Bon Jovi story, charts the band's future from February 2022 amid their star singers navigating a vocal injury in their four decades in the industry. He said there's a big difference between being in a studio and going out on the road. He said, we have just recorded a new album. I sing in vocal therapy every day, but I want to perform for two and a half hours a night, four nights a week, and I know how good I can be. So if I can't be that guy, put it this way, he said, I don't ever want to be the fat Elvis. Right. In March... Uh, hey, man, what's that supposed to mean? His band announced uh, their 16th studio album, Forever, which will land on June 7th after last touring in 2022. But... <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where those guys show whether they have it or not. And and I'm wondering what so so let's say <clears throat> that somebody like John can't tour anymore. Right. But can pull off album stuff? St- studios. Stuff. Yes, I was thinking exactly the same thing. Is it enough for them monetarily to do something like that and not have a tour support it or is it not enough for The musician to just record. You know what I mean? The paradigm has changed, uh, which is now it used to be you would tour in support of the album. Now the touring is the moneymaker. Yeah. So I wonder what that is. I would record the album, hire Mini Kiss, and have them go out. (laughs) Mini Kiss? Yeah. As Bon Jovi? (laughs) And lip sync. Uh. Right? Hey, man, people love seeing Mini Kiss. They're, They're awesome. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Coming to Disney Plus, the concert film Queen Rock Montreal will make its streaming premiere on May 15th as the first concert film available with IMAX enhanced sound by DTS. Uh, the original concerts took place over two consecutive nights, <coughs> excuse me, in uh, November 1981, and were arranged specifically to be filmed for a full length concert film to document their live show. And this film has never been released. Um, uh, not with this kind of sound. I think that this is the live 1981 footage that we've seen before. I'm not 100% sure, Steve. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Sponsored by Tim Hortons? Uh, the performance includes classics, of course, such as Another One Bites Dust, Bohemian Rhapsody, and Somebody to Love. Bring Me the Horizon is on the verge of announcing their highly anticipated new album, Post Human uh, and then it's got a uh, colon and says next gen uh, with Ali Sykes confirming a summer release after a delay since last August. The band teased the album with a futuristic video caption press start hinting at a new era. The clip features cryptic messages about virtual identity and a new beginning leaving fans eager for more details. 
A moment in the video suggests a potential album release date. Uh, fans have also noticed a particular moment which reads, The Church of Genesis welcomes you to a night at Utopia via <sighs> Next Gen. So convoluted, I don't care. There is a home beyond our bones. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I have no idea what any of that means, but fans got something out of it. I guess there's some kind of cryptic message. Uh, do we have a clip of the Jimmy Buffett tribute concert over there, Casey? Yes. I would like to play this. We, we had talked about this event that was coming up, and big, big star-studded event. It was huge. Uh, Paul McCartney, John Bon Jovi, and Harrison Ford sang Margar Margaritaville at the tribute. Um, so this was last week. I haven't heard this yet. Let's check this out. So Harrison Ford... I don't know if you can pick him out, but he's there. All right. Is yeah. this like fan it's, they're recorded? All up, they're all up on the stage. and I, I it, Yeah, a little better than that. I don't okay. know how exactly I was recorded, but there was, they're all of them up on stage. Here we go. The full sing-along, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was just it. That was Harrison Ford right there. Harrison Ford, yes. is, he handled right the salt part. <laughs> salt. Oh. Yeah. Salt. 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 I can, I can hear it. You can hear it. I heard that. I know. The audio's not really good, but I think I can pick up a little bit. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Paul was there. Go look for the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Uh, that was at the Hollywood Bowl last it was week, by the way. So an astonishing collection of musicians. So uh, yeah. Buffett's uh, adoration was uh, strong. Yeah, yeah, he had a lot of friends and and fans, obviously. So um, yep, they had a nice tribute. And that is all I have in uh, music news for you this morning. All right, we will take a break. When we return, we'll get our first letter for the word of the week prize. So stay with us. We'll have that when we get back. See what's coming up tomorrow. Stay put. CZ Top Tush on MMR 1032 with the President of the Show. Kush is hot, right? Tush? Kush. Oh, Kush. Uh, I don't know. Does Kush mean hot? Uh, no, pot. Yeah, there, there's a, yeah. Yeah, there's a Kush. Okay. That is a pot. And that that's is a pot. Heard. Yeah. Kush. Marijuana. Kush. Kush. K U. Oh, I thought you said hot. No, no. You know, pot, I'm sorry. Yes, I said pot is Kush. Ah, oh. yes. I thought you said is Kush hot. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't remember. Maybe yeah, it is. He, I don't. I do not know that. But yes. How is he talking Ooh. about? His weed. A lot. A lot that. of energy. A lot of energy spent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to know these things if I want to hang out with the hip kids. That's right. right. Exactly. That's right. So here it is a Monday morning. Our uh, day is coming to a close. Uh, it is a beautiful day, by the way. It does look terrific. Yeah, going up to 82 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. I brought and my fishing pen. Oh, you did? Yeah. Dude, yeah. the fishing pen. <laughs> That's a perfect time to use it. Absolutely. Outside, beautiful. Going by a pond. I'm going to stop off. Going for Marlin. Check yeah. something out. Yeah, why not? Uh, so, anyhow, uh, yeah, it's been a beautiful day today. I'm going to send out continue some to be. positive vibes to my oldest, Casey, who is in New York City right now, literally performing uh, at the Lincoln Center for the Shakespeare competition. It's and amazing. she's amazing. Just an amazing week. And I'm getting updates from my wife right now. It's just, you know, there's. When is it? When is she on like, stage? She could be on right now. Wow. Yeah. And what particular um, soliloquy is she performing? She's doing the to be or not to be. Okay. Oh, from from uh, Yeah. Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge, from Revenge of the, of the Nerds. nerds. Yes. So you guys remember Poindexter. <laughs> uh, do you help with any of this? No. Don't no. Run lines I mean, or anything? Honestly, I uh, I don't know Shakespeare. I have helped her with other stuff. Um, I try to do this healthy balance of like you need to make your you know your choices yourself and let me hear some things and let me just yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Like, so, for instance, uh, last semester, they were doing uh, 12 Angry Women. It's 12 yeah. Angry Men, but she goes to an all-girls school, and so she was playing the part of um, a, a, an immigrant. <laughs> Booger. That none of them had names, but she was playing an immigrant, and so okay. she and I had had some back and forth about that, about, I said, you, you know, as an actor, you are not putting on uh, an accent, you have an accent. You know what I mean? Just uh -huh. trying to, like... You uh, become, you don't mimic, you don't... Right, you know, acting, is, acting is doing, you know, acting is being. and Reacting, too. And, yeah. Uh, so, oh, good. Yeah. And it's, well, clearly it's working, for God's sake. She's, yeah. Look at where she is right now. Yeah, she's doing all right by herself. There's a big prize for this, too, right? This one, I mean, listen, if like she... 10 grand or something like that? Jet ski. No, it is a five-week study abroad in oh, wow. London. 
Wow. 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 Yeah. So she can all go, paid for? All paid for. Ooh. I mean, listen, she's up there. Royal Shakespearean Company and the Globe Theater and Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's Globe Theater level. Benny Hill? But, but maybe Benny Hill. Maybe Notting Hill. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> listen, where she's at right now and what she's doing right now is an amazing yeah. uh, an accomplishment on her own because yeah. she won the Philadelphia one and they, she won this trip up there. And, you know, so that by itself is, great. is an amazing experience. That's terrific. So, yeah. Wow. Excellent. All right. Well, good luck. When we will you find out today? Oh yeah, yeah. So what happens is uh, all of the the uh, kids perform, and then the top ten are then asked to perform again. Same uh, same monologue. Shakespeare going to be there or no? Uh, I don't think Shakespeare uh, can make it. Okay. Because um, he's dead. Son of yeah. yeah, yeah that had way, that gotten the easy way. cop out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we wish her good luck. I didn't mean to be yawning in the middle of that story. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> I try to pick my moments to yawn yeah. at the right time, and the next thing you know, I have to be saying yeah. something. Like There's you a pause, and I'm like, hey, we got an exciting promotion coming up for you. Or you might laugh. <laughs> 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 Wrong time. Uh, All right, we need to do the letter of the day. I can you, do this, You going to do that? I know, I know letters. All right, here we go. Yeah. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the daily letter. And the President and Steve Show is brought to you today by the letter... H, as in Hamlet. All right, that's a good one, yes. And we are going to give away a four-pack of front row tickets for... And pit party passes as MMR Rock's Monster Jam on Saturday, May 4th at Lincoln Financial Field. And you don't want to miss out on all of the racing, all-out racing, big air and backflips. An experience you won't forget, Monster Jam, as big as it gets. And you can see it live at the Link Financial Field. Saturday, May 4th, tickets are on sale now via Ticketmaster. Uh, listen to Brent Porsche each day. This week's going to have another chance for you to win tickets. So we will give that away on Friday. I will thank our sponsors. The Preston and Steve Show has been brought to you today by Duncan. President Steve Show runs on Duncan. Also brought to you by Acme Markets, fresh foods, local flavors. And Natural Lawn of America. Get free seating every year. Call 800-FREE-SEED now. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have a good friend on. It'll be Wawa Day tomorrow. Yes. So we will have the CEO of the company, our friend Chris Geisens, joining us to tell us of the activities. You, you can make your special request to him while he's here <laughs> about making sure about the seltzer the, water. The club soda. That's always true. when you go. True. Any, any Wawa issues you have, get him ready because we're going to talk to Chris yeah. Geisens tomorrow. He's the man. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Have yourself a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> 